Welcome back to another live stream. Hi, how is everyone doing? Man, this is an exciting week for me. And boy, oh boy, am I exhausted. It has been a long day and I'll tell you what happened. But hey, before we start anything, as usual, coffee first. Hmm, I'm going to show off my Canon L lens mug. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Coffee's life. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's say hi to some people first before we start the stream. There's some people already. Squida says, good morning, everyone. Hey, Squida, very nice to see you. Thanks for dropping by. How are you? Fajar Agus says, Selamat buat Malaysia tahan imbang 33 Korea. Salam dari Central Java near Borobudur Temple, the biggest temple in the world. Yeah, Malaysia is uh, fighting Korea now. There's the football championship happening, hey. But I'm not a football fan, so I don't really follow what's happening. But yeah, it's really interesting there. Are you watching the football live, Fajar, uh, versus me here streaming live? <laughs> this, that'll be interesting. Jet Set Journeys says, greetings from Thailand. Hey, Jet Set Journeys, how are you? Very nice to see you here. GG Wildlife, hey, very nice to see you here. How are you? Brian Tan says, hi, Robin. I'm finally able to watch you again since you changed your time a few weeks back. I think I've been using, um, I've been streaming at 10 o'clock, hey, for, for like a month or more now. And very nice to see you here, Brian. How are you? Sixters Backmaster says, Greetings all from New York City. Hey, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Sam Harris says, What is the Olympus camera that was in the thumbnail for the stream? There was the C8080. Ah, this is a really old camera. And I have actually made a video talking about that camera before. So just search C8080. HR Manro, hey, how are you? Very happy to see you here. Good afternoon from the Isle of Wight, UK, visiting India next week. Wow, that's such an awesome country for photography. Hey, I hope to photograph a tiger, but if not, lots of other stuff, culture and temples. Yeah, the people there are super friendly and it's such a beautiful and colorful place. Uh, oh, next week will be, I think you just missed the Taipusam celebration. Today is the Taipusam. So to any Hindu viewers up there, if you are celebrating Taipusam, Happy Taipusam to you. Eric Gerard says, good to see you again. Greetings from the Netherlands. Hey, Eric, nice to see you here. And I'm very happy to do live streaming here again, definitely. Serge says, hello, Robin from France. Hey, Serge, how are you? Kimochi says, how is life, Robin? Well, life has been really crazy busy lately. Uh, of course, I'll update you guys in a bit of what's been happening in my life. And yeah, I can't wait to share the details. MS Spelly T1 says, hello from Maryland, USA. Hey, how are you? Very nice to see you again. Thanks for dropping by. Jofu says, good morning from Texas. I got my first camera ever this year, which is the EM5 Mark III. Awesome choice. And your channel has taught me so much. No worries, Jofu. And I'm very glad that you got into Micro Four Thirds system. And the EM5 Mark III is such an excellent camera. I'm still using it actively. It's just that you guys haven't seen it on my channel recently. It's because I've loaned it out to a friend. Uh, it's sort of like a long-term loan and a friend is using the camera for a personal project. He couldn't afford a camera so I thought, hey, you know, I have a few cameras and obviously I don't use the EM5 Mark III for my jobs. I have the EM1 Mark II and the OM1. Both are fantastic cameras which can deliver my shots. So I thought the EM5 Mark III would serve my friend well to do his personal project. Sam Harris says, I just got an Olympus C5050. I thought it looked familiar. Yeah, they are pretty much very similar, right? They were launched about the same time. Rebirth2526 says, my camera can't make a phone call. Yeah, not yet. Maybe one day with the AI and everything, maybe your phone can make phone calls and make some coffee in the process. <laughs> Jeff Painter, hey Jeff, how are you? Very nice to see you. Hey Jeff. And of course, hi to you too, Rebirth2526. Kimochi says, is it possible to meet you and do street photography? I'm Malaysian, by the way. I am not that free, actually. Uh, I do have a few friends that I go out and shoot with. 
and most of my time is filled with uh, jobs. I do I, I do shoot for a living. I am a professional photographer. And whenever I have uh, spare time, obviously you guys know how I spend that time, right? I'm making videos for this channel. Uh, I know that from my videos, it seems like I do a lot of street photography, but that's not like... I shoot every day. I probably spend like one or two days a week, maybe two to three hours a session to do my street photography. And in every one of my sessions, I need to make sure that I have enough shots to make my videos because I have this very important principle that I'm holding on for my videos. If I don't have photographs, I cannot make a video. My videos will be empty, it'll be nothing if I'm just talking without photographs to show. So I always go out to shoot uh, for photographs and with enough photographs and make a video. Because of that, I need to always focus on my street photography sessions. I usually have uh, a few friends that I Either they follow me or I follow them, but I haven't been um, doing street photography with strangers in a, in a long time. I hope you understand. Brand says, just a question. Do you know what is the minimum focus distance at Infinity for 7 Artisans 18 f6.3? Just, uh, I think it's about half a meter and away, if I'm not wrong. I could be wrong. You can just, it's easy to verify. Hey, just take a photograph at multiple distances and see whether they are in focus or not. Zoltan says, hi Robin everyone, I'm from Budapest, Hungary. Hey Zoltan, very, very happy to see you here. How are you? Clint Johnson says, good morning everyone. Good morning Robin from the snowy Rocky Mountains. Ah, I envy you. It is so hot in Malaysia. I just showered and I'm already sweating now. <laughs> John Yazi says, hello Robin everyone. Hey John, very nice to see you here. How are you? Zoltan says, I want my camera to have HD thermal color printer built in. Yeah, I know, right? And I want mine to be able to cook omelette as well. Kimochi says, I'm also a videographer, but I'm planning to do more photography when I have free time. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, if you are, you know, a freelancer, I don't know if you are freelancer or not, like myself, I'm a freelancer and I'm a one-man crew. Most of the time I shoot alone. Man, it's like, the time is just gone. It's crazy. <laughs> Anthony says, new OM1 Mark II announcement, 30th of January 2024. Ha! Huh. Did you guys see that at the back? <laughs> Geoff Heron says, hello Robin from North East England. Hey Geoff, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. All right, I'm going to drink some coffee. I'm going to give you guys some updates on what's happening in my life. Coffee. Hmm. All right. If you guys uh, are not aware, I am joining a group of awesome photographers and content creators to go live together. It will be a joint live stream session hosted by the amazing Rob Track this coming Sunday. All right. Uh, it has become an annual thing. We've been doing this for the past five years. So it'll be really exciting to see everyone again uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, of course, the amazing Benjamin Chapel, who does awesome astrophotography work with his Micro Four Thirds system. He'll be there. There's Brand James from that Micro Four Thirds guy. Mati Sulanto, who is currently in Australia. I think he's in Melbourne, Australia. He'll be tuning in as well, joining this live stream. And then we have the awesome Peter Forsgaard. All of us here will go live together and our host will be Rob Track. He'll be asking us very challenging questions which I haven't prepared for and then we'll definitely have a fun time hanging out together and chatting with you guys. So do tune in this Sunday, it's Malaysian time 10 o'clock. For your local time, go to Rob Tracks uh, YouTube channel. By now, you should have Rob Tracks channel. Uh, just make sure that you you have the notification on when we go live on ten o'clock on Sunday. It's Malaysian time. That will be really really awesome. I hope to see you guys there on Sunday night. It'll be it has become our annual thing. All right, uh, and if you are locally here in Malaysia. There is this event happening from today to Saturday. It's a three days event at Geospace in Petaling Jaya. I honestly have no idea where this place was until today. It was my first time visiting and it was such an awesome event. Like this is a photo festival, it's a camera fair. Everyone was there, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, uh, OM system, Everyone and all the uh, accessories brands like Manfrotto, Joby, Profoto, uh, Ulanzi, uh, Tamron, Ricoh, 
Comica, DJI, everyone is there uh, showcasing their latest products. And fun fact, today I actually saw the Sony a9 Mark III for the first time. <laughs> it was showcased there. So this event is happening from today until Saturday, three full days. Uh, you still can catch it tomorrow and Saturday. I think most people don't work on Saturday, so you guys can check it out. They also have a long list of talks, workshops, activities, photo contests happening throughout the days. Uh, do check them out. It's definitely free. You can just enter the event. You can check it out. And yeah, uh, I may drop by on Saturday again. Just to say hi to some people that I've missed today. I was there today earlier. I was there from after lunch until six o'clock because my friend Azu was giving a talk. So I was supporting my friend. Of course, I said hi to some people. I met up with a lot of photographers and of course, uh, partners and uh, friends from the industry that something I haven't seen in many, 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 many years. So there was a lot of catching up to do. And boy, oh boy, was I exhausted. And I, when I came home just now, it was like, around six or seven it was around dinner time i was like oh my goodness i still have to do live but hey now that i'm live and with the help of uh coffee <laughs> hmm, i think i can stay awake for you guys you guys are so awesome more reason for me to be here and yeah and to chat with everyone and earlier this week i made a i published a video on this amazing uh, Lumix 100 to 300 lens and uh, the reason I bought this lens was because I wanted to use the lens for a particular job there is one particular shoot that requires me to shoot from a long distance I needed 200 to 300 millimeters reach I couldn't go near right and I don't have a such a long lens my longest lens is the 40 to 150 uh, Olympus so I bought this lens just specifically for that one job and I've already finished the job I've del delivered the shots to the clients so I thought it would be fun for me to just go to the bird park do some content and share my thoughts about this lens I thought it was quite a sharp lens and I find that it has some advantages over the Olympus 75 to 300 so if you haven't seen that video video do check it out it was published on Monday I had a lot of fun shooting with this Lumix lens uh, definitely do check out the video I have also updated my vlog I do have a second channel and in that vlog, I talk about a few things that happened in my life. Like last year, I deactivated my personal Instagram accounts. I shared the reasons why I did so. And also shared about me starting this live stream. I talk about the process. And uh, yeah, I also shared my latest purchase. But it's not the latest. I've, I've had this since uh, it was launched. This is the DJI Pocket 3. Not sure if I can get it to focus by covering my face. Yep, DJI Pocket 3. Yeah, so this yeah, this has been with me for several months now. I have made several videos. So the two videos that I published this week, the one on the vlog channel, as well as the one on the Lumix 100 to 300, they were shot with this uh, DJI Pocket 3, right? So this was the, the camera that was used to do my vlogging uh, from now onward. And I talk about this in my, my vlog. So I'm gonna leave a link. Let me just turn this off and put it aside so I don't destroy the gimbal because the gimbal seems very fragile. <laughs> Let me just put this down somewhere safely. I'm going to copy the link of my vlog here. If you guys have not seen the vlog before, I'm gonna put it on the chat section and I'm going to highlight the vlog here. So that's a uh, vlog. Do subscribe to my second channel. It's where I talk about non-photography stuff. I visit events, friends that I hang out with, uh, the places that I go to, the food that I eat, sometimes some travel, and sometimes I share some random thoughts that's not really photography related, maybe some personal things that I'm going through. It's just a place I just want to make content other than photography stuff, so I dump everything there. Uh, so yeah, do check it out if you want to follow on what's happening in my life, and and yeah, definitely, I th it'll be awesome if you can subscribe to that channel as well. All right, let's get back to the comments. <laughs> Adip Fami says, hello, Robin from Miri Sarawak. Hey, Adip, how are you? Very nice to see another fellow Sarawakian here. 
And Trio says, hello from Washington, D.C. Hey, Intrigue, how are you? Very, very happy to see you here. I hope you're doing great. John Fallows says, hello from the hills east of Manchester, U.K. Sad to say, all our snow has gone. I thought that's good news, right? I thought, like... If there's snow, it means it's too cold. And now that it's getting warmer, and it's, I think it's more opportunity to do photography. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that's the general idea, right? Paul says, did I miss the review of the new Pentax camera? Did I have a Pentax camera? No, uh, I don't have any new Pentax camera, but I do have one Pentax camera, which is the Pentax K01. It's not new. It's been out for like, I don't know, more than 10 years. Uh, you can still check out the, it's not a review, but I talk about that camera on my channel. It's there. Just type Pentax. I think I only have like one or two videos on that Pentax camera. Kimochi says it's the event free of charge. Yes. Do check it out. It's at Geospace. Uh, just... Uh, I, I think it's definitely, definitely worth going. They have all the latest cameras and lenses if you are into gear and if you are planning to buy something like memory card, batteries, tripod, camera bag, filters, or all kinds of attachments or any lighting system, right? Like flash, LED lights, or microphones, or anything, or photography, videography, content creating related, uh, they have it there and I think they have significant discount at this photo fair. So definitely worth checking out. And of course, just go there to, to check out the workshops and the talks and uh, all these photographers are sharing and they encourage people to go there and just listen. And yes, it's free for everyone. HR Munro says, OM Digital Solutions have really jumped the shark. OM1 Mark II should have fixed OM1 with updated firmware. 918 is a bit random, but okay. 150 to 600 is just silly. I was sure announcement was fake. I don't think the announcement was fake. If you look at the history of 4Thirds Rumors, the 4Tree Rumors site, whenever they say there's an announcement on a certain date, when the date is published, it always happens. So this is not fake. It will be published. I, I think based on the track record, they have not been wrong so far, right? Paul says, how can I get the I Should Roll t-shirt? I don't have that. I think you are referring to Mati Sulanto, right? I Should Roll. I don't have an I Should Roll t-shirt. I think you're confused. Zoltan says, your local photo festival is so cool. I'm jealous because I can't go. So another reason why you should be subscribing to my second YouTube channel, the vlogging channel, is because I have recorded some footage from that event and I will edit it tomorrow. I, of course, I don't have time to edit now. That now I'm, it's already 10 o'clock at night and by the time I finish the stream, it's going to be like past midnight. So I, I will be able to edit the video tomorrow. I'll publish the vlog about the event tomorrow. You'll be able to see uh, more clearly what's happening there through my vlog. Kimochi says, a photo with you this Saturday, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not shooting this Saturday. This Saturday, I need to do some Chinese New Year shopping. It's getting very close and I haven't had time to buy new clothes. <laughs> My mom will kill me if I come home wearing old clothes for Chinese New Year. Yeah, Gigi Wildlife says, uh, looking forward to the 150 to 600 SA Wildlife uh, talk that will complement my other systems. Yeah, uh, at this moment, I think the rumor is saying that it's possible the 150 to 600 is a rebranded or rebatched Sigma lens. I don't know how true that is, but uh, if it is, it'll be a little bit disappointing and it will probably show that. OM Digital Solutions is not really capable of making their own lenses anymore. It just seems like they are just borrowing or using the lens design from other manufacturers. I understand Sigma is an excellent lens uh, maker. No question there, Sigma makes some of the best lenses out there and they have been making amazing third-party lenses for Canon, Nikon, Sony, even Olympus and Panasonic, All right? We do have Micro Four Thirds lenses from Sigma. It's just that I thought I would want to see original design from OM Digital Solutions that will solidify the position of being really serious and being the expert in wildlife photography, which they keep trying to emphasize, right? But it seems like they might be just using other people's design, which begs the question, if you want to be the expert or if you want to specialize in wildlife, and you can't even make your own long lens. 
What does that say about you? <laughs> Zoltan says, Your new Lumix Zoom telephoto lens is very nice. Enjoy it for a long time, dear Robin. No worries. I'm not even sure if I'm going to keep this lens because I don't need 300 millimeters. I don't shoot birds. I don't shoot wildlife. 150 is plenty for me, right? Like I said, I bought that particular lens just for the sake of uh, using it for one particular job. And that job is done. I've delivered my shots to my clients and I got paid. And the payment is enough to cover the cost of the lens. So I may not keep that lens. And we have a super chat. Wow, Eric, thank you so much for the super generous super chat. Uh, Eric says, thank you so much for your hard work. Well, I want to flip this over to you guys. I want to thank you guys for being here. Like, I know I make a lot of videos and I do a lot of this live stream and yes I put a lot of effort in making my videos and I have not stopped making videos for four years now continuously every week I pump up new videos right but that would be meaningless and that would equate to nothing if you guys are not here watching commenting supporting and telling me that you guys like my videos so it is because of you guys here letting me know that I have contributed a little bit to the community that you found some of my videos useful and you're inspired by some of my photographs that that's what kept me going so honestly Eric thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for being here and thank all of you guys for being here I'm just very honored to have this platform to speak to everyone I'm just very thankful that I'm able to share my passion in photography with so many people right here. <laughs> Alright, Tyler says, I've used that 100 to 300 in Denali Park for years. Plenty sharp indeed with image stabilization to boot. Yes, it is very sharp lens. Indeed, for the price you pay, can't go wrong. M Termo says, hello from Czech Republic. Hey, thanks for dropping by. Nice to see you here. GG Wildlife says, I still have the original DJI Pocket. Still going well. Wow. That must be really interesting. Muhammad Rifki Aizad says, What happened if memory card slot not working and how to fix it? Send it to the camera repair service. Don't do anything crazy. Honestly, I've used a lot of cameras over the years and I've never had a memory card slot stop working. Like memory cards, they get destroyed all the time. All right? They get corrupted, they get broken because the SD cards, they are so tiny and it's plastic, and it's quite fragile, right? They get destroyed all the time, but I've never had any issue with memory card slots in the camera not working. So if that happens, then it's best to send the camera to, if your, your camera is an Olympus, to send to Olympus Service Center. If it's a Sony, just send it to a Sony's repair center. Carl Richard says, Evening Robin. Hey Kyle, very nice to see you here. Just saw you last night, hey, at the uh, Jimmy Chang's live stream. Raja Indra Putra. It seems that DJI Pocket 3 is often out of stock. It is. And it's because it is such a great product. And I was very lucky to be able to nab one immediately when it was available during launch. They started selling it after launch. I quickly buy one. I didn't even pre-order. I just bought one and got one immediately. So I was very, very lucky. Shobit says, hello. Hey, Shobit. How are you? Very nice to see you here. Maurice says, how are you doing, Robin? I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. One question. Having an issue with my EM5 Mark III flash hot shoe. I think it's the hot shoe because the flash works on my other cameras. Is there a better way to clean it? I don't think it is any problem with the cleaning. If the hot shoe has some issues, it means that it's a connection with electronic contacts. Send the camera to the service. I'm sure the people there will be able to fix it for you, right? And I, I believe that it uh, depends on where you stay. Like in Malaysia, we still have uh, an official Olympus or OM Digital Solutions service center taking in original products and fixing them. Yeah, so don't, don't do anything crazy. Gigi Walaf says, the 19mm macro is still out of stock at my local stockist. It's kind of crazy. It's been out a while now. Well, either it is very high in demand. That's one possibility. Everyone is buying it. Or it was extremely limited in production. That could be the way, right? Like maybe OM Digital Solutions did not predict that the lens will sell so well. So the initial prediction was much lower than what the market is asking in demand. So that could be the case, like the, the, the production is just too, too small to keep up with the, the demand pace. 
Anthony says, have some concerns about the new super telephoto zoom lens being just a rebranded Sigma lens. Yeah, I've just talked about that. Chris says, I should roll is a shirt line from Jared Poland. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's why I don't know about that shirt. Huh? <laughs> Indy says, hi Robin. Hey Indy. Thanks for being here. Greetings from the Philippines. Have you been here? No, I have not. Fun fact, I almost went to Philippines in the year 2019. There was an Olympus workshop when Olympus was still Olympus before OM Digital Solutions took over, before JIP bought them and carved them out from Olympus, right? Uh, they wanted to expand the market in, in Philippines and there was a talk of bringing me over to do some kind of photo walk or workshop uh, and product launches in Philippines, in Manila. Yeah, but unfortunately that didn't happen. I think some the, the deal didn't fall through in Philippines. The dealers and Olympus could not reach an agreement or something. So yeah, I, I have not been to Philippines. But having said that, I have... Strangely, I don't know why, <laughs> I have quite a few Filipino friends here in Malaysia. We do have a lot of Filipinos working in Malaysia and I have made a lot of wonderful Filipino friends. They are hardworking, honest and amazing people and they are so talented, like my goodness. These people are really an inspiration and I, I really love hanging out with, with my Filipino friends. And I, I've just seen one of them this afternoon. Sorry, I, sorry, Van, if you are watching this. Sorry I left and uh, we didn't have much time to catch up. We, we must have a session to just sit down and chat and just, just gossip, right? Yeah, I have, have some really cool uh, Filipino friends and they are really cool people. We have another super chat from Bastian. The last week, some YouTubers quit their work. If you stop, I will cry. Nah. I, well, here's the thing, Bastin. Okay, first first of all, thank you so much for the super chat before I forget to thank you. And and uh, if you don't know all this super chat, it means a whole world to me. As you guys know, when I make my videos, they cost money and they cost some resources. I use my own funds and my own time to make videos and I have to take my own time to make these videos, right? I am a full-time photographer, so I shoot for a living. My clients hire me, I do paid jobs, I take photographs of my clients, I deliver uh, the photographs and they pay me. That's how I earn a living. So only during my spare time, sometimes I don't have a lot of time. Uh, whenever I have spare time, I use this time to share uh, my photography, I share my thoughts, I share some tips and tricks on Olympus cameras, I share my adventures on photography in general uh, with you guys on this YouTube channel. And oftentimes it requires me to use my own time, my own resources, and yeah, with your contributions here, whether it's from buy me coffee, from PayPal contributions or super chat, it definitely will enable me to continue making more content and to make better videos in the future. So thank you so much for that, Bastian. And thank you also uh, to anyone who has contributed before uh, about quitting YouTube. So here's the thing. A lot of people, they get burned out on being on YouTube, creating videos, uh, creating content, making videos on YouTube. But I don't see that happening to me because YouTube has not been... First of all, YouTube is not my primary source of income if you guys haven't figured it out. I am a photographer, right? I've talked about that. And secondly... Even when I'm making videos on YouTube, I don't make videos because I like making videos. In fact, I don't like making videos. I, I am not a videographer. I don't like the process of filming myself talking to the camera. I think that's very, uh, I don't know. I, there's, I'm very self-conscious about that and I don't like my voice. And imagine I have to edit myself for hours and hours just listening to my own voice. It's just, it's cringy for me, right? But I do that because I love photography because I want to talk about photography, because I use YouTube as a platform for me to share my passion about cameras, my passion about the art of seeing. It's, it's a place for me to share my photographs, and I'm so thankful that people actually come and respond and they actually watch my videos. And because I have an audience, I always talk about uh, have the importance about having an audience to grow your photography. It helps me as a photographer. It helps me, it inspires me to push myself to be a better photographer. So YouTube is secondary to everything that I do. YouTube is just a tool for me to talk about photography. As long as my passion 
on photography doesn't die. As long as I stay passionate, the fire in my photography, as long as that keeps, bur uh, keeps burning, as long as that's alive, I will continue shooting, taking photographs, and I'll continue to make videos to share with you guys, right? I think I talked uh, with my friends about this. Like, I understand why some YouTubers are, are burning out because they make videos and they get tired of making videos. They, they get tired of creating content. But for me, I don't get tired of talking about photography. I've been doing this for a while, for more than 10 years actually. I have a photography blog, on, I've written articles on a website for more than 10 years before I started this YouTube channel. And that blog has been around for 10 years, this channel has been around for four years, I don't see myself stopping. Unless something happened, of course I can't predict the future, unless I give up photography, then I may give up on YouTube. But I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon anyway. So thank you so much, Bastian. All right, uh, Chris says, a photographer from Philadelphia in the US. Hey! <laughs> Hot U UMU Pick says, Panasonic not showing at a festival. Nope, Panasonic not showing at a festival. Tyler says, I've been looking for a good telephoto for wildlife for a good while. This 150 to 600 would fit in my bag well. I hope the rumors about the size is not true. Because if it is, it will not fit in any of my bags. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where were we? Chris says, I have recently made the mistake of holding an OM5 and now I want a lighter AM1 Mark II alternative, but not having money for it kind of helps. <laughs> yeah, the AM1 Mark II is such an awesome camera. I still use it today for my uh, professional work. Zoltan says, we love your videos, Robin. Thank you so much, Zoltan. I appreciate that. Van! Hey, Van! Van is one of my Filipino friends! <laughs> Very nice to see you here, Van. Glad to see you earlier, Robin, and Joe's face. I'm just dropping by. No worries, Van. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, Van himself is a YouTuber, and uh, just type his name, Van Ligutom. You can find his YouTube channel. Sometimes he talks about photography as well, and sometimes I appear on his, his vlogs as well. So do give subscribe uh, to Van. Crystal says, I have the Lumix 100 to 300 Mark II, but I have been struggling with getting sharp bird photos with my EMR Mark II and have no idea what I'm doing wrong. There are days when nothing is sharp with it. Okay, uh, then may I suggest that maybe you try enabling the lens image stabilization or you have to choose whether it's the lens or the camera. On the OM-1, I was actually using the camera's image stabilization. I wasn't using the, using the lens. Uh, but I suspect that EMR Mark II's uh, camera's stabilization is powerful enough to handle the 100 to 300. But give it a try, hey. Uh, one, there, there are many possible reasons why you don't get sharp images. One is possibly shutter shock. So make sure you enable electronic first curtain shutter or anti-shock zero second. Uh, second reason would be faulty image stabilization. Maybe the body's image stabilization is faulty. Maybe the lens image stabilization is faulty. Maybe you just turn everything off and use high shutter speed and see, rule out any possibility of faulty stabilization or shutter shock problems. Yanis Sinadinos. Hey, Yanis, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. If rumors are true for the OM1 Mark II, then OM Digital Solutions changed policy with firmware updates. They never updated with new features for EM5 Mark III, EM1 Mark III, OM5, OM1, and now they create a product for a simple firmware upgrade. What do you think? It's very hard to say, hey, like, uh, Previously, the firmware upgrade on the EM1 Mark II is the most significant. They added OM log, they added new continuous autofocus algorithm, they added a lot of new features in the camera, they improved the buffer for burst shooting, and overall the camera is more responsive, like while the camera is writing into the card, you can operate the camera, you can change the settings whatsoever, right? So all these things you couldn't have done before. Uh, they also improved the lag time on the electronic viewfinder, the EVF, is more responsive. And all this can be optimized from software point of view, but what if like a lot of new features like ND filter, for example, or the AI subject tracking, uh, or all these newer, more higher capabilities in the OM1, what if those things cannot just be added through firmware update? What if the AI requires a separate hardware, a, a different chip to be installed in the, in the camera? I don't know, I'm just saying. Or maybe the older EM1 Mark III or, or EM5 Mark III or the EM1 Mark II, these cameras, whatever that the processing chip is on the camera, that could not enable AI capabilities and they cannot 
uh, use the latest features or they cannot support or they are not powerful enough to use whatever that is in the OM one. That could be the, the reason as well. Sometimes we just want the camera to have a new features or better capabilities, but what if the hardware wasn't ready? That could be a problem as well. YP Bandung says, good evening from Thailand. Hey Michael, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Zoltan says, may I ask you Robin, how old are you? I'm guessing you're like 35, you're looking very young. I am turning 40 this year. I was born in 84. Kitty Pong says, Saudi is crap, Robin. Hey, very nice to see you here. I used to be a fan of Olympus, but now I'm a Sony user. However, I'm still a fan of your channel since Olympus E510. Yeah, very thanks Thanks for being here since the for third CSR time. I appreciate longtime supporters and loyalty is a dying trait this year. So being here all this time, man, you are a rarity. So I really appreciate that. And it doesn't matter what camera you use, whether it's Olympus, Sony, Fuji, Kodak, Con, uh, Canon, or Hasselblad. We all love photography the same, and it is our passion for photography that binds us, and it's what brings us all here together. And that's what this community is for, right? To talk about photography. So yeah, Yanis says, instead of fixing autofocus issues in OM1, they create a new product, which is more expensive. But let's just wait for the camera to be launched first before we jump into any conclusions. Because what if it does have some significant improvements? What if it does have new features? What if it's really a wow camera? I don't want to make any conclusions now. And especially, I don't want to just trust the rumors. Let's just wait and see what happens. <laughs> All right, uh, Muhammad... Rifki says, thank you for the information. No worries. I'm glad I can share. Terry says, hi, Robin from Dal Kent in the UK. Hey, Terry, very happy to see you here. Thanks for dropping by. Indy says, now you have an Olympus user friend, me. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, Filipino Olympus user. You are a Filipino Olympus user as well? Ah, oh. Arif, hey. <laughs> I just saw Arif like, what? Five hours ago, six hours ago, we were having a meal together after the Geospace Photo Festival event, the one that I just talked about. Uh, Arif, get back to YouTube. I want you to make a new YouTube video. Arif has a YouTube channel, by the way. <laughs> and yeah, I'll wait until you publish a few videos first and I'll start promoting you. How about that, Arif? You make some nice videos and I'll promote you on my channel. Deal? <laughs> Ayman says, Abam Robin, hey Ayman. Nice to see you again, and nice to have people calling me a bum every week. Marco, hey, hello, how are you? Thanks for dropping by, very nice to see you, Marco. Jack Attack MMA says, Hi Robin, do you think that OMD sticking with the 20 megapixel sensor is a good or bad thing? I recently saw a photo comparison between a G9 Mark II and OM1, and I still prefer the OM1 images, which surprised me. The reason why the OM1 images, they are better than the G9 Mark II is because the OM1 has better dynamic range and better high ISO. The G9 Mark II's sensor has a dual gain, and because of the dual gain structure, somehow the low ISO, the there's a compromise in terms of dynamic range and high ISO and the noise control, right? And the dynamic range has been like restricted. It's not as wide and you can't recover as much details from the highlight and shadow as much as the OM1. It's not so much of the high megapixel count, it's just the architecture of the sensor in the GNI Mark II is slightly different and it's optimized for video, right? It's not the megapixels problem. Paul says, what, if you, what is your coffee? It's just some instant coffee. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Sixtus McMaster says, I was talking to Chris, so make sure you are using either the IS on 100 or 300 or the EM1, not both at the same time. Well, technically you can't use both at the same time. So you have to choose from the camera whether you are using the lens IS or the body IS, it's the lens IS priority. So if you turn the lens IS priority on, then the camera will default in using the lens image stabilization. If you turn it off, then the camera will just use the body's image stabilization. The switch on the lens is just to turn it on and off, either the lens or the body, not both. Zoltan says, Robin, your English is very good. You're fluent and your accent is very pleasant. And you're making great educational and inspirational videos. I love your channel. Thank you so much, Zoltan. You are very kind. I think my English is, um, it requires some work. I'm not a native English speaker. I am a Malaysian Chinese. Our Malaysian uh, 
well, the, the Malaysian formal language is obviously Malay, so I do speak Malay with my uh, with my friends here, and in in our formal uh, correspondence, we do have to write and speak in Malay, and of course, being a Chinese. In my household, we do have we do speak in uh, Chinese dialects. So I speak Hokkien when I talk to my mom. So of course, English is not my first language. But yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, of course, having said that, I always try to improve my English. I've been watching a lot of English movies, English television shows. And I speak English with my friends, trying to improve myself. Carl says the Sigma 150 to 600 works well with a speed booster on micro four thirds. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. Lego Troll says hello from Canada. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you here. George says hello, Robin from Romania. Hey, George. Thanks for dropping by. Andy Gomez says, Hi, Rob Hello, Robin. Looking for upgrading my Lumix GS85 to the new Micro Four Thirds camera with a focus on landscape and cityscape photography. What would you recommend as a logical upgrade in this context? EM1 Mark II or EM1 Mark III? And if you want the latest and greatest, then obviously it's the OM1 and the coming OM1 Mark II, which will be launched next week according to rumors. And uh, you can also consider the G9 Mark II if budget is not a concern. Liana says, greetings from Washington. Hey Liana, how are you? Jet Attack MMS says, I'm trying to decide which lens to get for birds as a Micro Four Thirds beginner. Which do you think strikes the balance between image quality and value? Thank you for your hard work. If you want budget and value is uh, value for money is the biggest concern, then two lenses to choose from, either this Panasonic Lumix 100 to 300 lens, which is an excellent lens. I just made a video to talk about this earlier this week. Please check out the video if you have not done so. Or you can check out the Olympus 75 to 300. I've also made a video to talk about the Olympus 75 to 300 lens. Both this Lumix and the Olympus, they are both fantastic lenses. 300 is a good place to start for bird photography. If you want more, then of course there are other lenses to consider, but the other lenses also will cost twice or three times more expensive. <laughs> Paul says, greeting from Durham, England. Hey, Paul, thanks for dropping by. Jose says, what is your opinion about the EM10 Mark III S? I think it's a great camera. What specifically do you want to know about the camera? Uh, I think for a beginner, I, I wouldn't use the camera for professional work. It's not weather sealed. The body is not made of magnesium alloy. So I can't just bang the camera around. I can't shoot in rain. And obviously, the autofocus is not as good as the EM1 series cameras. And obviously, it doesn't have dual cut slots, which is very important for me as a professional photographer to have a redundant memory card in case the first one fails. Memory cards being corrupt is very common. The failure of memory card is very high, alarmingly high. So I need a backup, right? AK47 says, Hi Robin, I just watched your review for Yi 42.5 lens the third time. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think that's a great lens. Rob Track! Hey! Rob Track is in the house! Guys, go to Rob Track's channel and make sure that you check out that live stream is already up and i will be in that stream this sunday so thank you so much rob you are the mvp you are the most valuable player you are carrying the entire team you're organizing everything you're doing so much work uh, seriously thank you so much for organizing everything Xmida says, Robin, can you share what kind of engineering background you have? As you mentioned several times, we work for as an engineer and salary was nothing exciting in Malaysia. I graduated as a civil engineer. Uh, I'm doing engineering and construction and I worked for a consultant firm before, specializing in geotechnical engineering. So I basically deal with anything below the ground. We do foundation work, we do pilings, we do slope stabilization, we do basement work. Uh, basically we do anything that you can't see above the ground. It's just the foundation before the building or the road is being built, right? I hope that makes sense. Rob Track says, hi everyone, be sure to click the like button to show your support. Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate that. <laughs> Clint says, a year ago, one of the OM system executives mentioned that they will be working with other manufacturers, so the Sigma might be the result. Sigma 56 and 30, and the results are very good. But the Sigma 56 and 30 were not made for micro four thirds. They were designed for a PSC size image sensor for Canon, Sony, Fuji, Nikon, and they poured it over to Micro Four Thirds. That's why these lenses are gigantic, right? <laughs> Anz, hey, greetings from Mon Kiara. Anz is another one of my awesome Filipino friends. He's also an awesome photographer. Anz, we should do some photography shoots soon. 
Jeff says, uh, says hi to Rob Track. <laughs> you guys are saying hi to each other. Zoltan says, I love all Zuko and Lumix and Leica lenses. And hi to Mr. Rob Track. All right, I'm going to dive into my topic. That was a long list of hello and hi's to everyone. Thanks so much for being here. We have about 100 people live. I'm going to sip some coffee before I dive into the topic. Hmm. So the topic for tonight's stream is five things that your cameras cannot do. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I've made a lot of gear videos. I'm not going to lie. Being a content creator, the struggle is trying to create content to balance between making a content that I want to make, that I'm passionate about, and also the content that people like to watch. Unfortunately, the one that people will click most of the time, 99% of the time, they are gear-related content. Whether it's a new camera, obviously I can't afford buying new cameras all the time. And manufacturers here don't like honest photographers. They just wanted to talk about positive things. So like Sony and Fuji, they wouldn't approach me because I'm just being too honest, right? Unlike in the US, you have no control over what the reviewers say. But here, they will come and knock on your door and ask you to take down your video if they don't like what you what you make or what you say about them. So that's a different topic altogether. But what I'm trying to say is that to make content, uh, to make sure that my channel is growing and it's actually alive, you know, there's no point for me to have a YouTube channel if, if no one's watching, right? In order for the algorithm to work, in order for me to get enough clicks, I have to make gear videos. I can't run away from that. And I've been talking about like gear almost every week cameras, lenses, I talk about the Sigma F, uh, DP2 Quattro, I've also talked about the Lumix lens, I've talked about the OM1 camera, the EMR Mark II, I talk about kit lenses, I talk about lens camera. But at the core for me, yes, I love cameras, don't get me wrong, as a photographer, I love all cameras, but I also want to talk about photography. And every single time I talk about composition, I talk about lighting, I talk about storytelling, I talk about improving your vision as a photographer, I talk about the important things like shooting discipline, I talk about all the things that actually will really improve your photography. The views drop to like crazy. Let's say I get 10,000 views on uh, my Lumix 100 to 300 videos. And I talk about composition, I barely will be able to get 1,000 views. And that's how bad it is. So it's very hard to find a balance, right? So in this particular stream, I just want to shift the focus away from gear. I want to talk about the five things that your camera cannot do. And these five things are the things that you as a photographer will have to pay attention to, to make sure that you get the fantastic shot. So number one, obviously is composition. Your camera cannot read your mind. Your camera don't know how you're going to frame your shot. Your camera don't know what to include or exclude in a frame. Your camera will not be able to know how you want to think. Even with AI, one day if there's AI to move the camera around to compose a shot, it's not what the photographer's intention, it's not what the photographer has in mind, and composition has to be something that comes from the photographer. It's a creative process, it is individual, every photographer will see things differently. You put me and a few other photographers in the same room, shooting the same subject, we will compose it differently, we will use different focal lengths, we will visualize the thing differently, we will come up with all different kinds of output. Our framing and our composition will not be the same. That is one thing that your camera cannot do for you, it is one thing that you actively have to think and as you take uh, the photograph whether it's uh, a portrait photograph or a landscape or street photography documentary or if you want to take a photograph of a bird or macro or conceptual or uh, urban anything all right you will have to always make sure that you get the right composition because composition is something that you cannot fix in post. It's not like, oh, there's too much noise. I just use like the AID noise software. Oh, it's not sharp enough. It's slightly out of focus. I just use the sharpen AI or something, something to fix. No, if your composition is bad, it's bad. There's no fixing. All right, I'm going to share uh, a group of photographs, a series of photographs on a composition where I just want to give some examples on how I compose my shots. Obviously, these are street photographs. I can't share my work photographs. My clients will not be happy. So you guys will just have to bear with me. I'm sharing my personal street photographs. It's an ongoing project, right? Like, like this particular shot. 
your camera will not be able to tell that there's a hole there. The camera doesn't know that there is a hole. And I like to shoot things through the hole because that immediately draws the attention to that particular man's face, which is actually smiling and having a conversation with another man, which is barely visible from that translucent panel on the left, right? So I thought that composing this in this particular manner, you may agree or disagree with me, composition is personal. You can say this is a poor composition, I'm fine. But for me, I consciously choose this because my camera cannot do this for me and I can put this there and this is something that you, you have to pay attention to. All right. Next, uh, I like to play with colors. We all love colors and I am a strong... I, if you have seen my Instagram, you understand how I love curating my shots in colors. So obviously, this guy is in red and everything in the back is like a mini shrine. It's a Chinese temple shrine. Everything is in black. Uh, sorry, not black, red. I mean, it's red versus red. So I put red and red. Your camera will not be able to recognize that. Even if it does, it wouldn't know that this is how you want to compose. Like I obviously left a lot of room at the top of the man because I want the red at the top of him to be dominant. It's not just him. Typically, if you want to frame a good portrait or a good uh, environmental shot, you will go closer to the person, right? And you will have the face of the person. But in this case, he was wearing the mask and I purposely shot it this way so that his face is obscure. You don't see the face that adds a layer of mystery to the shot. And you see a lot of red, dominant red in this shot. And that's a conscious composition choice that your camera cannot make, only you can make. And this can make your photograph truly yours. This photograph is quite recent. This was shot in a market, obviously, and of a man selling uh, bananas. And obviously, again, this is a composition choice. Low angle, shooting from bottom up. And I have bananas surrounding left, right. Even the man was holding the banana. He held the banana by himself. I didn't ask him to. I was just taking I, I would be happy if he, he wasn't holding the banana. He was just looking at me, smiling. I would be very happy with the shot. But the fact that he held it up, it added another point of interest, another point of focus. So it's not just the bananas as a foreground, but there's another uh, comb of banana that is holding up. And then of course the focus is on the man's face. So this composition, there's a triangle there happening. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. Yellow, 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 banana, man. Right, composition. I like to shoot from top to bottom. Top to bottom is also another conscious decision that I make. This works especially if you want to shoot food. This is apam balik or it's a peanut pancake, which is a, a popular local dish in Malaysia. Man, looking at this makes me hungry. Right, again, I like to shoot through holes. Again, this is a very conscious composition decision. Uh, again, I love the, the color yellow. We have a lot of yellow in Malaysia. I don't know why. I think the king's color is yellow and golden. So that's why we have a lot of yellow. And I shoot through this almost like a keyhole yellow. And the man, shirtless man, is looking from a distance. And it's like a framing, right? Composition is also about framing how you frame the shot so that you can draw the attention straight into the subject. Again, top down shot. Uh, this is more like a process from the dough. And then it's being uh, shaped into the bread. And then they fry the, the mini bread uh, on the, what you call that, the frying oil on the right. So it's like a process, multiple different processes that you see in this one particular frame. Again, it's composition, a very conscious composition choice from flour mixture. They roll it up into the dough. They shape it into the, the, the bread and then they fry the bread. Uh, which will turn into a final edible product. Again, I like uh, framing, another framing choice, right? This uh, popular building, the KL Tower, the Kuala Lumpur Tower, and I frame it through something which makes an interesting shot. Your camera will not be able to make this kind of shots. Yeah, you can change your ISO numbers. You can change your F number, yeah, F5.6, F6.3 for the best sharpness. You can use the best and most expensive lens. You can use the most expensive camera. You can buy the latest Sony A9 Mark III. You can spend like $8,000 for the camera. You can buy the most expensive G Master lens. But if you don't tell the camera how to compose, if you don't have the way to see your shot, if you don't have a way to make your photographs interesting, no matter how great your shot is, it may be the sharpest photo in the world. It can cut through 
the other person's finger as as they touch the photograph your photograph may be like perfectly 100% noise free it has like 20 stops dynamic range it has 100 megapixels but if your composition is boring your photograph is boring <laughs> just a few more example again this is a conscious decision to shoot this person in an environmental manner we can see a lot more things happening this is a grocery store the lady is just sitting there uh, with all the things around her to show where she is and a little bit of context right environmental portrait again i want to tell a story using the background to show to where she is establish the location and what she does uh in that particular shop All right composition composition can tell a story uh, I love reflections. Your camera wouldn't know what a reflection is. Your camera would just look at it like it's a normal thing. So I love reflection. I'll put the camera low. I always tell people if you want interesting composition, go high, go low. Try to see things away from your eye level because we all shoot through the viewfinder, right? And it's very boring. Take your camera away from the eye level. Use the LCD screen. Use the tilt screen. Go as low as possible. Climb some stairs. Be adventurous. Then you'll find some really interesting way to see a different perspective right uh, this is a walkway and entrance into an LRT station this place is under renovation and because it's yellow it gives a very nice silhouette on the man walking by again it's a composition choice you have the bright area in the middle where I put the man in silhouette and the bright area immediately frames the man and your eyes are immediately drawn to bright areas so how are eyes or the attention how do you play with attention? How do you draw your viewer's attention to the subject? Put the subject in the bright area or avoid the bright area if you don't want attention in that particular scene. Or colors. Use color to draw attention, right? These are conscious composition choices, creative decisions that you have to make that your camera cannot make for you. No matter how powerful your camera is, no matter whether it's a global shutter, whether it's a full frame, medium format, poor composition, poor photographs. Right. Again, this is a chance. I met them. I walked past them and the, the guy clearly saw me with the camera. So he smiled and took the photograph like the yellow shirt matches the yellow painted background. And the blue shirt matches the blue painted uh, column in, in the background. So yeah, composition again, right? You have to see how to compose and frame your shots. Again, red, blue, red, blue. I think you guys know what I'm trying to do here. I just have to wait for a person to walk by. It's not hard to find a man wearing jeans. I just have to wait for a man with a jeans with the red shirt. And there you go, composition, red, blue, red, blue. This is a few more shots. This is an example of going high, shooting from top to bottom. So I climb quite high, shooting from top, and the cat was there. I didn't put the cat there, the cat was there. Well, uh, obviously hygiene is to be questioned. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's clean, but I'm saying that this makes for a very interesting shot. This photograph was actually exhibited in one of uh, the street photography exhibitions in my hometown, Kuching in Borneo. It was printed large. And yeah, I was very proud of this particular photograph because it has all the different colors. It has the bright uh, orange tomatoes, it has the bright green lime, there is ginger, and the ginger color matches the ginger colored cat. <laughs> right. And obviously, uh, all these men together, they were already very well composed. Sometimes, you have a perfectly balanced photograph in front of you. All you have to do as a photographer is to be able to observe, spot it, and take a photograph. That's it. Sometimes, you don't have to think too much. Don't overthink. Don't make things too complicated. Recognize the scene as it is. Like, this particular scene is already perfect. Just point your camera at it and take photograph. <laughs> Alright, I hope you guys see what I'm trying to do here. The first point, the first thing that your camera cannot do is composition. You as a photographer, you have to decide how you want to compose your shot and how to make your photographs interesting. Alright, I hope you guys agree with that. Alright, let's get to the comments. We are a little bit behind. Forever an amateur says, Greetings Robin, watch your review and I'm glad you like the 100 to 300 lens. No worries, I like the lens as well. Kojaz says, I've watched so much of your videos, just wanted to thank you not owning the OMD EM1 Mark II. Yeah, thank you so much for watching the videos. I appreciate you there. And uh, yeah, EM1 Mark III is still such an amazing camera. I still use it today as my main camera for my work. 
Goldie says, Hi Robin, which camera do you think would be a good upgrade from GX85? Sadly, the GX9 falls short to my view. There are so many cameras you can consider EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III if you can afford the latest cameras. OM1 Mark II if it comes out next week. G9 Mark II or even the latest uh, OM1 is still pretty good. Carl Richards says the Sigma 30 is the same size as the Panasonic 25 and the 56 is tiny. No, the Panasonic 25 is much smaller than the Sigma 30. I don't know what you're talking about. I have both lenses side by side before. The 25 is about 30% smaller than the Sigma. The Sigma is very tall. Yeah. Yumi says, Hi Robin, hi everyone, hope you are well. I finally bought a used EMR Mark II with the Olympus 240 Pro. I have to go out to take more photographs. Congratulations on the purchase and I hope you like the EMR Mark II. And that 240 is an excellent pro lens. You will love the results you get. It's such a sharp lens. Zoltan says, I love your YouTube shorts, Robin. Explain how I clean my lens and camera. Funny shorts. <laughs> Thank you so much. GG My Life says, I read somewhere where a guy was chatting with someone from OM Systems and he explained that there is no future for full thirds in USA and that the market is strong in Asia and Europe. I cannot remember where though. The market is not strong in Asia and Europe, unfortunately. It is not selling well here. It's not selling well in Singapore. I think uh, Olympus used to do very well in Thailand. In fact, they were larger than Fuji. Nikon at one point, they were much larger than Nikon. I don't know how it is now, but most parts in Asia, they are doing very poorly. In China, it's almost non-existent. They have to exit uh, South Korea. They, they actually shut down before OM Digital Solutions bought over uh, Olympus. So no, they are not doing well, at least in Southeast Asia, and they're not non-existent in India or a lot of other Asian countries. Xmeda says, well, composition can be fixed by bit by cropping. Not true. Cropping, well, first of all, if you crop, it means you lose resolution, right? And depends on how you crop. If you just crop a little bit, like straighten and color, that's fine. I also crop my photographs. But if you're saying that this is a photograph, you crop all the way to this, to say that this helps with your composition, that's not the way to do photography. I'm against that. Gabor says, hi, Robin and everyone. Hey, Gabor, thanks for being here. Finally, I have my dream pair, EMR Mark II and 12200 to 100 Pro lens. My pictures quality step a level up before I use the 12 to 200. Yes, the 12 to 100 is definitely a much better lens compared to 12 to 200, but it's also not fair to compare because the 12 to 100 is a pro lens and the 12 to 200 is not a pro lens. All right, time check. It is already 11 o'clock, uh, and I have uh, been speaking nonstop for one hour. I'm gonna drink some water. Uh, drink some coffee and then continue on with the the stream. <laughs> keep the comments coming. Hey, keep the comments coming. Let me just make sure I have everything here. All right. Mm. Ah. All right. Drink some coffee. Coffee is life. Show off my Canon L lens mug again. All right. Hmm. All right. Gabor says, one interesting thing, turning off the eyes button on the lens for turn off the eyes in the body, it was surprising for me. Yeah, that's what I just said earlier on. The IS on off is just to turn whether the IS on the lens on and off or the IS on the body on and off. Zoltan says, I always watch the videos and I leave a thumb up. The least I can do to give a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Zoltan. I appreciate that. And Zoltan says, I love Olympus JPEGs. I've made a video to talk about how to optimize Olympus JPEGs. And I do sometimes have to shoot in JPEGs. I have clients who need immediate photographs, whether it's for press release or that to share to the stories live, like uh, the event is running for the full day, but they need the photographs on the spot to share on the social media, right? Like I can't just give them raw photographs. So I have to give them JPEGs as well. Forever and Aperture says, talking to X Media, I crop irrelevant distractions from my pictures if I have to during the post. Yeah, but it's best to just, I highly encourage that you have a strong shooting discipline to shoot as is without cropping because a crop result is very different from a non-crop result. Trust me on this. Your photography will be 
taken to the next level, you will definitely improve a lot if you shoot your photograph as intended, rather than, oh, I shoot first and I crop later. Hmm. Zotan says, I love the composition choice inside my Olympus camera. All right. <laughs> Gigi Walaf says, the banana shot is awesome. Thank you so much. This is one of my favorite shots as well. Esmida also loves the banana shot. Thank you so much. John says, a note to brothers. I'm using the E1X with the new 100 to 400, and I'm getting very good results, and I find it's a good combo. Yeah, I think, I don't think there are bad lenses the 100 to 300 75 to 300 both the 100 to 400 from panasonic mark 1 mark 2 and the olympus 100 to 400 they're all excellent lenses i don't think any of them are are bad zoltan says robin is a very good photographer because his photos are always perfectly beautiful and he always nails everything congratulations on your skills thank you but uh, that's not true i don't always nail everything i do miss some shots i'm only showing you my best shots, right? And uh, that's also another part, uh, which I'm not going to talk today, but maybe one day I'll talk about this. See, there's so many things I want to talk about, which I think people are not really interested in. And one very import important part to be a better photographer is to learn curation, how to edit your photographs. When I talk about edit, it's not about Photoshop or Lightroom or post-processing. When I talk about editing photographs, it's like editing an article, cutting away the things that's not necessary. Right? Only show the best work. The best photographs, uh, the best photographers only show the best work. Adrian says, hey Robin, hey Adrian. Thanks for dropping by, very nice to see you. Zoltan says, I love the fact that you share your photos in your videos and you get me inspired and involve me more into photography, watching yours and like Rob Track. Thanks. No worries. And I'm glad that uh, you feel inspired. I'm glad that you want to go out and take more photographs. And at the end of the day, that's all I want to do. I want people to go out and take more photographs, right? If you can do that, I'll be very, very happy. Forever an amateur says, just reminded me of a photo I have somewhere that the subject I wanted in focus and the other parts was completely blur blurred, gave it a dreamlike feel. Yeah. Zoltan says, gorgeous colors and well composed, very artistic photos. Thank you for sharing. No worries. Um, I'm glad I want to share. And I want to, moving forward, I want to share more photographs, uh, especially on my live streams or even on any of my videos because I feel that if I don't have photographs to show, then there's no point for me to, to, to talk, right? Photographs are everything for a photographer. Santik says, hello from Kajang. Hey Santik, how are you? <laughs> Santik says, I went to Gunting for an excursion to photos, leaf footprints. Ah, oh, I think it's quite fun. Hey, Gunting. Gunting is a very vibrant and colorful place. And because the weather is, is colder than, it's, it's, it's in Highlands, so it's colder than here. Uh, I will feel that it's a lot more fun walking around with a camera as well. Chris says, one thing the camera also cannot decide for you is wanting long exposure for a specific scene. I like hand holding long exposure shots in the city. I have to make that decision in the camera in the camera. Yes. If you want specific effect, like if you want the motion blur, you have to deliberately tell the camera to create that effect by slowing down the shutter speed. You are right, Crystal. Santik says, my Olympus 2 to 40 uh, is currently in service. It seems at 40 is out of focus blur and stop down at about 4 to 4.5 to get sharp pictures. Oh, that's, that's kind of sad to know. I still have my 12 to 40 and it's in perfect working condition. It's my go-to lens if I want convenience and just want one lens to do it all. Dark Trap Studio says, nice hat. Are you going to release it? Nah, this, this is a custom made and it's like very cheap. I think like if I wear this and wash it a few times, everything is just going to uh, wear off. And yes, hi to you too. Great to be seen, uh, Dark Trap Studio. Zotan says, you can tell the Zuko Pro lens by the low ap aperture, high price, heavy and robust construction. Yes, that is true. Tui Pam, Pam says, can you compare a Ricoh to a Canon? I want to know about your size and speed of operations. I don't have any of these cameras. I've sold off the G1X. I've owned it for about half a year. I did some videos. Uh, it's not, just not a camera for me. Ricoh GR is smaller than the Canon. So if you want something pocketable, the Ricoh GR is better. The, the Canon G1X is a lot chunkier. But then again, the G1X is also, it has a zoom lens. And it has a viewfinder, it has a swivel screen, the construction is a lot more robust. It is, man, that camera is built like a tank. So if you compare it side by side, it seems like the G1X has a lot more to offer than what the Ricoh GR is, is offering. Ricoh GR is a fixed lens, it has APS-C size sensor. Uh, I think autofocus wise, both cameras are very slow. 
I miss shots using both cameras. But if I were to choose, I will pick the Canon G1X. The Canon also has better colors. Exploring with Rotten Fish. Hey, Rotten Fish. Nice to see you here. Hi, good evening, Robin. Love your channel. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much for being here. Dr. Studio says, after searching my perfect chip setup for like one year, finally I found it. Never had a camera. No worries. G9 for steals and uh, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for video. Cheaper than recent camera. No worries. I'm glad you finally found a camera that you love. And now that you have, please go out and shoot more photographs. Gary, hey Gary, how are you? Very nice to see you here. Hey Robin, good to see you. My camera can't learn what I like the most from my photos and that's good because I don't want that process of photography being taken away from me. All the best Robin, no worries. Yeah, our cameras definitely cannot read our mind and because of that, we have to tell the camera what to do. We are the master of our photographs. We have to instruct the camera or control the camera to get the results that we want. That's the thing that a lot of people fail to understand. They just say, oh, my photographs are not good enough. That's because my lens is not good enough. My camera is not good enough. No, that's because you're not telling the camera to give you what you want. Crystal says, yes, editing is so important. Also, don't have darlings if the shot is not a good one. Must press delete. Yeah, that's the problem, right? A lot of people, because we take our photographs and these photographs are like our babies. And when you delete the photographs, it's like you're killing your own babies. So it takes some practice and some very strong discipline to be able to do that, right? It's not easy. Dot Trap Studio says, I was going to go for a zoom, but they don't have uh, image stabilization. So I'm going to go with the uh, GX Vario 3500. Yeah, if you need the image stabilization, then these cameras will give you, definitely give you much better option. Santik says, yes, walking in Gantin is not as sweaty as in, in, in KL. I wish entire Malaysia is cool weather. Nah, that's, I think if that happens, it's the end of the world. Five things my camera cannot do. Smart stitching of panorama, both horizontal and vertical. <laughs> All right. Cole Jazz says, my composition skills much improved after I started using prime lenses for practice. What do you think? Yes. I think prime lenses forces you to just use, emphasize on one singular focal length and fully maximize what that focal length can do for you. It takes away the choice and all the variation from other focal lengths. And because you're stuck with one focal length, you have to make it work. Whether you go nearer, you go further, you find a different standing position to get your shots. So it's also understanding what that singular focal length can do for your photography. And the only way to do that is just by staying strictly with one focal length. You're right. We have another super chat from Entrick. Thank you so much, Entrick, for the super chat. I really appreciate that. You're very generous. Entrick is sending super chat in every single live stream. And thank you so much for such support. Like I said, uh, it's only through your support that I'm able to continue making content, right? Uh, a lot of people misunderstood. They think that, oh, I'm a full-time content creator. I'm a full-time YouTuber. I have nothing else to do. That's not true. I am a full-time photographer. I have clients. I shoot for clients. I deliver my shots. That's how I get paid. And that's my main source of income, right? And only during my spare time, and I have to use my own money and resources to make videos to share here. And don't get me wrong. I love uh, being on YouTube because this is where I talk about my passion. I love photography, obviously. And I always say that you cannot fake passion is whether you have it or not. If you have the passion, if you are passionate about something, people can see it in you. And because I'm passionate about photography, I want to share it. I use YouTube as my platform. And you guys sending me these contributions like Entrick and a previous few others before this. And because of your contributions, I'm able to continue uh, sharing what I love here. So thank you so much for that. All right, continue on. Zoltan says, drinking coffee and enjoy. <laughs> no worries. Definitely, I enjoy my coffee. Santix says, I took the Lumix 20 for my excursion today. If it can do smart stitching in camera, it will be wonderful. Composite of a scene, a super wide angle. It's not so much of it cannot do the stitching. Uh, it's more like after you stitch, the photograph don't look... There's a difference between a stitch photograph and a true wide angle photograph. It's not the same. You may think that yeah, stitching allows you to get a wider photograph, but if you compare with a true wide angle, there are certain characteristics there's a natural look, a pleasing look to it that, that's missing from a panorama photograph. 
Zoltan says, I love Olympus Colors Science. Same, I love Olympus Colors as well. Jack Attack MMS says, I've been waiting for the price of OM1 to drop and I can get a new one for the equivalent of around 8,000 ringgit. Do you think that's a good deal? I don't... For me, I never thought that OM1 is a good deal because I feel that it's a step back from the EMR Mark II. And that's the reason why I still use my EMR Mark II as my main camera to do my jobs, right? So currently my OM1 is my backup. And the reason is because I didn't buy the OM1, it was given to me. And I can't just, people say, oh Robin, why don't you just sell the camera away? Or why don't you just give it to someone? I'm like, dude, it's a gift from someone. I can't just sell it off. That's rude. And who the hell are you to suggest me to sell the camera? Like, hello, you are not my mother, okay? <laughs> So yeah, I, I would think that it's not worth it. Maybe you can wait for the next week's OM1 Mark II announcement. OM1 Mark II announcement. <laughs> then you decide what you want to do or which camera to get. George Morin says, anti-cropping. No, I'm not against cropping. I crop my photographs uh, because most of the time I have to straighten a little bit. Once you straighten a photograph, you already crop a photograph. And I, I also will crop a little bit at the edge. Sometimes there's something that I don't want it there. That's fine. But if, you, if your photograph is like that, you crop it all the way to like that and say that cropping is okay, you're kidding yourself. That's what I'm against. Jack says, my camera can't get out of the bed in the morning when it's below freezing. <laughs> true, that's true. I can't get out of the bed if, if the temperature is below freezing. Gigi Valaf says, now I have the EMR X. I, will, I could now put my 60 macro on the EMR Mark III, but I do like the flip up screen for macro on the EM10. Mark II is such a dilemma. Would there be a, any benefits apart from 20, 16 megapixels? Oh, a lot. Like from the EM1 X or EM1 Mark III versus the EM10, you have better stabilization, better electronic viewfinder, better processing power. Of course, the 20 megapixel sensor, you get better dynamic range, resolution, and high ISO. And not to mention that you have dual cut slots. There's like the list is endless, right? And even uh, there's faster processing, longer battery life. Man, it's like I can list 20 benefits. Easy. Yeah. Zoltan says, Prime Lens is the best way to go. My choice and zoom for backup. Yes, I shoot primarily with Prime Lens and then zoom is my backup as well. Gary says, in my opinion, gear can only improve the photo up to a certain degree. But after that point, the photographer is the one that will significantly affect the quality of the image. I agree 100% with you, Gary. It is the photographer that makes or break the shot. And it is your responsibility to understand the limitations of your tool to fully optimize the strength and work around the weaknesses of equipment to get the best results. And everything else, is depend it depends on your creative input, it depends on your vision, it depends on your storytelling technique and how you use your photography as a medium to express yourself, right? Dark Trap Studio says, having the shot in your head before pressing the button is what the camera can't do even with a viewfinder, it just can help you, yeah. Visualization is very, oh, pre, Visualize, not pre, I guess. For me, it's just visualize. I just visualize. It's, there's no such thing as pre-visualization. Yeah, I, I don't know if just English is, is just so confusing. Yeah, being able to visualize your shot before you take the photograph is very, very important. Xmita says, yes, nice panorama, both uh, horizontal and spherical will be great to have in camera. The server is out in row. Now we have AI and processing power for that task. Phones can do that. But yeah, I just don't like the results from, from the panorama, right? Yeah. Sorry, I can't pronounce. Stan Rock 64 is that how I pronounce your name? Unfortunately, Panasonic uh, optical image stabilization and Olympus image stabilization cannot be used together on most micro photos camera bodies. Too bad the two companies haven't cooperated on this feature. They will never cooperate because they both use very different system. Uh, the way the image stabilization inside the Olympus camera body and the one that Panasonic is using, they're completely different and they are not compatible at all. Yeah. Santik says, one cool feature of Olympus or Lumix camera is the highlight. Are you talking about the highlight and shadow? Yeah, which you use to control the dynamic range on the JPEG. Yeah, that's why I talk about highlight and shadow, right? Yeah, but it's, that only affects JPEG. And like, uh, I don't use that so much. I will normally shoot in RAW and I'll edit my RAW photographs. Dark Trap Studio says, besides learning experience, what helped you the most in your photography journey? Besides learning experience, shooting, spending a lot of, I guess that's, that falls in experience, right? You have to spend 
a lot of time shooting. The more you shoot, the better you get. Shoot more than you consume. That's the best. Archie Kin says, oh no, I'm late again. I'm from Dubai. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And no worries. No worries about being late. I'm just happy that you are here. Satik says, is there any ways to load custom curves via SD card? I don't think there's any necessity to load any custom curves. Hey, shoot in RAW, Santix, and you should be taking advantage of the RAW file, especially if you're shooting in micro photo. You should be surprised on how much the RAW files can benefit your output in your photography. Zotan says, please, people, push the like button for this live. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to drink up some coffee, and then I'm going to move on to the next point on what your cameras cannot do for you. <laughs> All right, the next thing that the camera cannot do for you is lighting. Lighting, whether it's available light or artificial light, like flash LED light. Lighting, some will argue, is the most important thing in photography. And being able to recognize a good light will make your photograph so much better. Sometimes just change the position where you take a photograph, move the portrait nearer to the window, or avoid certain harsh light, or add certain accents like LED light, or use flash to balance the ambient light. Being able to control or being able to improve lighting will dramatically improve your photographs a lot. That's something that your camera cannot do. Yes, you can edit the highlight and shadow, you can push the exposure up by five stops, whatever. That's not the same. Now, people argue that you know the problem is shooting in low light. That is not true. There are two problems here. One is there's not enough light, and there's one poor poor quality light. It may be a dim situation, but if the lighting quality is good, you can still get a good photograph. Good quality, quality light meaning that the color covers all spectrum. Like It's not like all blue or all purple, right? You can't fix it. Uh, it's a balanced color. And like it's evenly lit or you have like a sense of direction. There's a bright area in one side and then there's a dark area in one side to have a contrast and it gives you a perception of depth. That's a uh, meaning of good photograph, right? Rather than a flat, very ugly color which you can't correct. Low light is one problem, but like I said, I'll, I'll, I don't mind dealing with low light as long as the quality of light is there. Being able to recognize quality of light, being able to manipulate light in a photograph, being able to recognize it being bad in the first place will save you a lot of trouble. There's something your camera cannot do. You as a photographer, you have to decide on the lighting that you want in your photograph. You have to decide whether the lighting is good enough you want to decide whether you want to add lighting. You are the one who control if you're doing studio light, how the studio light is going to be, the direction, the power, the way you diffuse the light, the way you shape your subject, where you place the shadow. Shadow is not an enemy. A well-placed shadow is your friend. Who said that? I think it was... Oh, I can't remember the photographer that said that. I, I know he's a Nikon shooter. I can't remember. The well-placed shadow is your friend. Anyway... Uh, I think he's also the photographer that writes the book The Moment It Clicks. I can't remember his name. Oh my goodness, my brain is not working. Anyway, yeah, shadow, controlling the shadow, controlling where the light comes from, lighting, recognizing light, that will improve you as a photographer. It's very, very, very important. Now, that's number two, right? So we have talked about number one, your camera cannot do composition for you. You have to decide about composition. And we talk about number two, you have to decide on lighting. How do you light your subject or how do you recognize whether the lighting is not good enough? You have to do something to interfere with the lighting or avoid that particular light at all costs. Uh, whether you want to use flash, LED light, studio light, whether you're shooting under uh, available light, there's a way to move your subject around to achieve an ideal lighting condition, right? There's something that your camera cannot do. Whether you move or whether your subject move or whether you want to add lighting, you have to decide as a photographer. Now, the third thing that your camera cannot do is moment, decisive moment. 
decisive moment is a very important part in photography. A lot of people miss that. If you're doing storytelling through a photography, if you are shooting, uh, let's say, a stage, you are capturing a singer performing, or if you are shooting dance, action, even wildlife photography involves moment. Decisive moment is the key in making the shot work. Now, I'm gonna share a list of photographs again. Like I said, no photographs, no talk, right? So I have to share more photographs. Now, these are the list of photographs that I talk, when I talk about them, they have moments. This particular photograph was taken in a wet market. They store the larger fish. And why this particular shot work? Well, I didn't ask them to pose though. They just held out the fish and they asked me to take a photograph of them. That's how friendly people are here. I think uh, someone made a joke uh, outside of the frame. There was a lady, he was talking to the man and the man was laughing at her joke. It was because of his explosive laughter that I clicked the shutter button and it made this shot. It was the moment that he laughed that created the energy that made this shot it improve the shot so much better. All right, this particular shot, why this moment worked is because there was one person in each of the arch opening. Obviously, this wasn't planned. This was a street photograph. I need to wait for it to happen. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's not perfect. They are not all aligned. They're not all in the center, but it doesn't matter. It was still a good moment. One person in each arch opening, right? Moment makes the shot happen. There's another one. This was taken in Kuching. Oh, just want to throw in uh, another tip, which I've actually shared already in my main video anyway. Rule of arts. Usually, rule of arts works. One, three, five, seven. When you have even subjects, it just doesn't work. Like in this case, there's three people in the, the photograph, right? And it just happened that they are framed perfectly, like one lady is in the door opening, and then there's two windows, one on the left, one on the right. There's two more people there in each window, which just immediately makes this shot work, right? Timing, timing is everything. Timing is very important in photography. Decisive moment works. People underestimate the importance of moment, right? Like this uh, lady with the baby entering the bus, right? The bird just appeared, and because the bird is in the frame, it created a very dramatic moment for this particular, otherwise boring shot, right? It was the bird that added the much needed attention, much needed tension to the photograph. And there was the red door, this is a temple in Malacca. I just needed to wait for a man to be covered in that particular door walking by, and this particular moment works, right? And uh, an entrance, waiting for the lady. The lady uh, had the towels on top of her head, carrying on top of her head, and she enters the door. That's the moment that I was waiting for. These moments, these decisive moments, or these critical moments, the timing, you as the photographer, you are the one who decides which moment works, and you have to be able to respond to these moments as well. Your camera is just a tool. If you don't click the shutter button, nothing will happen. When do you click the shutter button? That's up to you. You have to decide. These are the things that your camera cannot help you to get. You have to make it happen. And by deciding the right moment, it makes or breaks the shot. And this particular shot was taken at Kota Raya many, many years ago. And I saw this lady walking by. This was taken by a kit lens, by the way, the Olympus 14-42 to EZ. People say, oh, you know, which lens do you get used to make this shot? It was just a kit lens on a EM10 body. Uh, yeah, and it, the pillars are covered in posters with uh, all the ladies wearing in yellow. And there's a contrast with another lady wearing a yellow walking by. Moment, moment and composition. Timing, everything comes together nicely, right? Uh, this is how moment can actually make the shot such a dramatic shot. I missed the moment here, I'm not gonna lie. I wanted the man to be right in the middle. Uh, but as I clicked the shutter button, it was a little bit off. 
my fault totally my fault i wasn't ready i, I saw the shot happening i knew it was going to happen i didn't react reflexively in time but i still like this shot anyway sometimes the shot can be slightly flawed it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect we are humans we have imperfections sometimes the imperfections can make the shot a great shot i'm not entering this photograph for competitions i don't aim to be a national geographic photographer I don't aim to to for to be an international like those celebrity photographers who people will like idolize or worship. No, I just want to enjoy photography. I shoot photography for fun. These are personal photographs on the streets. I do it as my shot of therapy. I enjoy it so much, and I'm having so much fun taking these photographs. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Right, uh, just a few more photographs. Again, timing is everything. Rule of arts, this is another rule of arts here at play. Yep, cat jumping, timing, decisive moment, right? At the mid jump, mid air, timing, right? Timing is everything. And of course, this is the last shot. Now, this is a case where technical imperfection is okay. Uh, as I was taking this shot, I saw three cats and I wanted to adjust the aperture to maybe f8 or f10 so that I can have all the cats in focus or maybe move away a little bit. But I realized that they were all putting their paws in their mouth. And when this happened, I know that I have to quickly click the shutter button already. If I scroll the aperture, by the time I finish scrolling the aperture, it may take like just half a second. This moment would have been lost. This is where I want to emphasize timing is everything. If you see something, click first, think later. I know this shot is not perfect. It could have been wider. It could have had better depth of field. It's not perfect. If you submitted this into the competition, it will be ruled out, but who cares? <laughs> I don't want to win competitions. And I think competitions, like if you change the judges, you want to have a different set of winners anyway. It's what the judges like, right? And why would I want to please the judges anyway? I want to please myself. If I want to do photography, I want to be happy. Who cares if other people don't like my photographs? I want to like my photographs. I want to enjoy the process. So in this case, timing is everything. All right. I hope you guys see the point now. I've made three points on how your camera cannot decide composition for you. Your camera cannot decide the lighting, whether the lighting is good or not, and how to improve the lighting that your camera cannot do. You have to do it yourself. And your camera cannot decide the decisive moment. You are the one in control of the decisive moment. Let me just check something quickly. I just want to make sure everything is okay. Right, everything is in order, no worries. All right, I'm going, going back to the comments. I'm a little bit behind, but I do want to drink some coffee first. Coffee is life. <laughs> mm. Ah, let me just chat. I don't miss anything important. All right, Santik says, editing role for family and friends photos is a hassle, but it's the only way to get the look I like, yes. I think you have to devise a workflow that is not a chore to edit and you can just edit it quickly without thinking and the more you do it the more it becomes second nature like now i have to edit my photographs quickly for my client i don't dread editing raw files anymore it's not a hassle to me anymore it's more like i see it as a part of the digital photography workflow if you see it that way like your photographs aren't finished until you do post-processing then it's not a hassle Michael says, I wrote something. Unfortunately, it was too long. Sadly, I lost the comment. Oh, then re retype it. I'll be happy to reread your comment, right? Yeah. Zotan says, make shadow disappear. Nah, no, don't make the shadow disappear. You need shadows. Like, shadows is not an enemy. As Mida is talking to Santix. No worries. You guys keep talking to each other. Santix says, one more thing that camera cannot do is timing. Timing is very crucial in photography. Uh, photos at exit moment tells a better story. Yeah, that's just uh, the entire sharing uh, earlier on for the five, ten minutes was about timing. Thanks for the heart, Zoltan. And Michael says, I recently got the 25 f1.8. I set a goal for 2024 is to use this lens to get my composition better and to learn how to give an image a soul. Robbing a banana shot is exactly an image with a soul. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I really like the image also. Hey, I should print it out. Zoltan says, Robin, so right about the shadows. Shadows can create different moods. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, magic is intentions. That is true. 
GG Wildlife says, Decisive moment in wildlife photography is my thing. You are so right, Robin. That is true. Arshukin says, Nice shots, Robin. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Sunny says, Thanks, Robin, for sharing on composition and timing topics in photography. No worries. I think people don't talk about this enough. Like, I, I am guilty. All right, I'm guilty as charged. I talk about gear, I talk about cameras and lenses. That's because that's what YouTube is. People tune in, they click whenever there's a topic to talk about uh, cameras and lenses. But from time to time, I also want to focus on what's important in photography. I want to talk about improving your vision as a photographer. I want to talk about what is your intention. I want to talk about how do you improve your seeing, right? Your, the, the art of seeing. I also want to talk about composition, lighting. I want to talk about all these things that matter. Storytelling. Yeah. Zotan says, you nailed the best moments, Robin. Thank you so much. Dr. Studio says, is this 30 millimeters? Which which is 30 meters. All the photographs that you have seen, they were taken with uh, a variety of different lenses, whether it's 50, 35, uh, 28. Uh, the cat shot, that particular cat shot with the three cats, at the end there was a Ricoh GR3X, 40 millimeters. That was borrowed from Mati Solanto. Yeah. Zodan says, Robin, you're a very talented and passionate photographer. Thank you so much. And you are patient because you have nailed moments and you had to wait for that to happen. I am not a very patient photographer. I will wait for like five minutes. If nothing happens, I'll just move on. Hey, I'm not like one of those people who wait for like half an hour or one hour for that one shot. I am not. That's why I cannot do bird photography. I've seen friends who go into the jungle. They'll stay inside the jungle for like five hours just to get that one bird. I'm like, no. <laughs> I have a lot of better things to do. Gary says, these are really nice pictures, Robin. I still have a lot to learn. Great work, Robin. No worries, Gary. We all learn together. I think there are... I don't see like people being better or worse. I think, Gary, we are all different photographers. You do you and I do me. Like I do my photography the way I do it. You do your photography the way you do it because we see things differently. We are very different people. And ultimately, I cannot be you and you cannot be me. So... Photography is a space where we are free to explore our individuality. We are free to express ourselves through our photography. We are free to do whatever we want through our photography, right? If that's true, then just do what feels right to you. Just do what you love. And only through being really enjoying every single process of shooting, of making photographs, loving the craft, that that passion can show through your work, right? That trap studio says, cat shot is the best. Yes, you guys have no idea how many cat shots I have. <laughs> Zoltan, yes, it's always the cat, right? Santik says, a great street photo will have uh, exposure, composition, and timing. I will say it is more than that. Exposure is a basic thing that all photogra photographs will have to be properly exposed, right? But composition and timing, yes, composition, timing. I will say timing matters more than composition. Moment matters more than composition. But if you can nail both, then you have a very powerful photograph. I will say lighting is more important than exposure. Lighting, composition, and moment. Yeah, but above all, moment matters the most. Stan Rock, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Your timing shots are great, by the way. Uh, Stan Rock is abbreviated from Stone Rock. All right, Stone Rock. All right, yeah, now I can call you correctly, Stone Rock. Thank you for the kind words. Zodan says, I love cats. Yeah, I love cats too. Arshikin says, this is a great shot. Thank you so much. Uh, Dark Trap Studio says, lots of AI win competitions. This is the abstract indeed, yeah. And whether you win competition or not, it doesn't really matter because by winning a competition, it ultimately means that you are able to please that particular group of judges that's judging that one specific competition. If I change the group of judges, completely different people, we're going to have a different set of winners. I can guarantee you that. Zodan says, and the depth of field is beautiful in the cat pictures. Thank you so much. Pinnacle Pete, hey, hey Pete, thanks for dropping by. Very nice to see you here. You can use a zoom lens like a prime to improve your composition by choosing a single focal length and not changing it. Plus, a single zoom can give you many different focal lengths to practice with. That is true. If you start with a kit lens, I always tell people you have, let's say you have a 1442, you practically have three lenses. You have a 14, which is a 28 millimeters, you have a 35, and then you have a 50 millimeters in equivalent, and then you have uh, an 85. So you have like three to four lenses at 
at once. It's just that if you use a prime lens, you deprive yourself the option to zoom because it's so tempting, right? Oh, I'm shooting, uh, let's say I'm shooting at 15 millimeters now. Oh, I see something wider. I want a wider angle lens. A lot of people will just default to the mindset of, I just zoom and get that shot, right? So that takes away from the purpose of restricting the focal length for the sake of improving, if you get what I mean. Frank says, find composition and lighting, then wait for the right time. Simple, but never put those things together. I feel that's not how it works because a lot of things, the timing, the moment, it happens right in front of you and you have to like react responsively. You don't even have time to think about the lighting and the composition, right? If you have the time to think, then of course, it's not really a decisive moment anymore. Uh, but there are shots where you can find the composition and lighting and then you wait for something to happen. That's the camping shot where you just wait in one spot and then wait for something to walk into that scene. Uh, but I feel that those kind of shots rarely uh, make it to my favorites. Like, you can disagree with me. We all can like different kind of shots. A lot of things that I like will happen so fast that I have to react, like, on the spot. Yeah. Dark Track Studio says, you can edit stills in DaVinci for free. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Yeah. Role management are done automatically. Shot look great, putting the camera color management. That is true. But I wouldn't, I don't think it's a very efficient solution. You get what I mean? It's free. Cost-wise, it's free, but like in terms of workflow, it's not a very effective or efficient solution if you want to batch edit, let's say, uh, 500 photographs at once. Something says, I commented about timing and then you talk about the importance of it. Of course, moment, yeah. Sixter says, those pictures confirm my opinion that among microphotos vloggers, you and Rob Trey are the best photographers. Oh, you are too kind, Sixters. I hope Rob is here to hear that. <laughs> Sati says, waiting for five minutes for straight shadow therapy is really patient. How long did you wait for the uncle person walk into the red door in Malacca? He was walking when I arrived. So as I was passing by, I saw him and I just waited for like 10 seconds and he's in the frame already. Yeah. Twiger Torgier, Torgier, I hope I hope I got your name right. If I don't, I'm very, very sorry. Robin, what is street photography story you want to tell? Story is something else the camera can't do. Yeah. So for me, it's more like things that happen, the daily lives around in Kuala Lumpur. That's a story that I want to tell. Like people don't see these scenes. And my stories are not complicated. A lot of people will say, oh, there's like social commentary, or you know, like there's a poor versus the rich. And then they have like, oh, discrimination or racism. I don't know, talk about like uh, all these different things, like all the divide that's happening. No, no, I'm, I'm not into that. You can, of course, you can go into documentary, you can go into more of this complex uh, storytelling. But for me, it's just, I want to show a slice of reality from Kuala Lumpur. It's as simple as that. And sometimes the best stories are the simplest ones. George says, what do you think about the OM1 Mark II? It's not out yet. I can't think about something that's not out yet, right? So let's not skip ourselves too far ahead. Let's wait for it to be launched next week. The rumor says it will be launched next week and we'll have another different stream to talk about it. Dark Church Studio says, not quick indeed, but the best software for color grading. <laughs> Yeah, Asmira says, have you ever tried some underwater photos? No. Robin and water does not, we do not mix well. My, I mean, I've consulted Feng Shui masters before. I don't know if you guys do that or believe in that. And they say, Robin, stay away from water. Is your bane. You will not do well with water. <laughs> All right, I'm going to drink some coffee and I'm going to continue talking about the topic of the stream. What your cameras cannot do and the things that can truly improve your photography. Hmm. Ah, I should drink water. Yeah, I should drink water because I've been talking nonstop. Drink water. Hmm. Right, let's check some stats at this moment. We still have 108 people online concurrently. Now I'm going to go to the next point. So we have talked about uh, 
the three things that your camera cannot do to get great shots, right? Because people talk about like high ISO, dynamic range, resolution, sharpness, the, the best lens, the best camera, global shutter, like want to improve the next camera. They talk about, oh, full frame is better than micro photos, blah, 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 blah. But then the, the true things, the things that really, really matter, that can make a big difference in improving your shot. The three things that your camera cannot do, I talk about it already, composition, timing, and of course, uh, lighting, right? Decisive moment, lighting, and composition. Now, the fourth one is storytelling. <laughs> now, this is the thing that a lot of people, when they start photography, they keep asking the question, how? How do I improve my shot? How do I take a great portrait photograph? What is the best camera settings? What is the best shutter speed? What is the best ISO? Which aperture should I use? What lens should I use? How, how do I get this shot? What is the secret technique? How do I edit this photograph to get the best result? It's about how, 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 technique, how. I want to learn how, right? But people don't ask the question, what? What the... What is the story that you are telling? What are you shooting? And I believe that the question, what, is more important than how. Because once you shift the focus away from how to what, then you'll see that you're starting to include something important in your photography. You may have the best landscape photograph. You may have the best wildlife bird photograph you may have the best street portrait photograph but if you don't have the what question answered your photographs are empty what are you doing what are you telling what is the emotion that you're trying to express through your photography is it sadness let's say that i want to tell about this person's suffering Let's say you're doing a documentary about this person being discriminated, for example, for whatever reason. I'm just giving a, a very broad picture, right? And being able to tell sadness, maybe you want to strip away the colors and just show in black and white. There you go. By knowing what you are doing, you're already finding ways to work towards the direction of delivering the shots. Stripping away the colors, showing in black and white using a lot of shadows to convey blackness, the bleakness of the person's life, showing that the person's expression, right, and the environment. You see how, by answering the question, what, can lead to improving a better photograph. So your camera cannot do that for you. Your camera is all about how, 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 right? What's the best setting? What's the, how is the aperture and all those things? Which is the best, best lens to use? But if you can just switch things a little bit, change things around on what you want to do. Like for me, I can give you an answer. Like just now someone is asking me, Robin, what is, this, what is the story that you're trying to tell? One of my ongoing mini projects is uh, Portraits of Strangers. What I'm doing when I'm out there shooting on the street is collecting portraits of people that I meet along the way. Why am I doing this? Because I love seeing smiles on people. I love interacting with people. And when I'm shooting portraits of people, it makes me happy. It makes them happy, right? It's the joy of a human smile that I'm taking in my photographs when I'm doing this project. It's that joy that I'm taking into my photographs that I'm trying to capture. You see, when you figure out the what, everything else comes a lot easier after that. You just have to answer the question, what are you doing in your photographs? Now I'm gonna share a series of my portrait photographs now, right? Let's, again, I said, uh, it's empty talk if I don't have something to show. Portraits, All right, so here we go. A lot of my portraits were shot at a market area. So this man was holding a raw chicken thigh up in his hand. <laughs> this was shot like really early in the morning. I think it was like seven in the morning as the sun just rose in Malaysia, right? So what am I shooting here? Yes, it is a portrait. Yes, it is a, a street portrait or a street photograph. It qualifies as a street, but if you look closely, it's a portrait of a person holding a chicken. Why? Obviously, he's 
shopping is buying some food from the wet market in the morning, the raw chicken and vegetables, maybe for the family to cook later. See what is very, very important. Next question. Again, it's very, very easy to take photos of people, right? Just take photos of anyone, strangers. But you can clearly see from this particular shot, it's an environmental portrait. It's a shot of a person working in a back alley. He was peeling onions, right? So this also answers, this photograph not just answers the question of like, oh, this is a, a portrait. No, it tells more story. That's why storytelling is very important, right? It tells a story of what this person is doing. There's context. What is the person doing? The person is peeling onions. Example, this is uh, one of my portrait of strangers series where I go really, really, really close to the person just to take the headshot of the person. I love doing this. And some people will say, ah, but this, these photographs, they look very simple. They look very plain, like anyone can do it. They look very, I don't know, like too, too simplistic, right? But for me, I love the minimalism of it all. I love my photographs to be clean. I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of my photographs. I love my photographs to be really plain, have as little elements as possible so that you can straight away look into the eyes of the person. Like, what am I doing here? Again, the question, what? I just want the portrait of this man, a simple portrait of the man. And you can see that the man is looking at me directly. You can see that the man is friendly. You can see the man gave me consent and you can see that this is the look that I want in my photograph. I've answered the question, what? Because what do I want in this photograph? Is this expression of that person in this photograph. You can see the expression is very similar, right? The previous, this expression and the next person. You can see this, this consistent look. Can you see it? I, I don't know if people can see it. I, I see it in my photographs because I've been doing these photographs for a long time. This, this project has been ongoing for years, right? All these portraits. Can you see the similarities of this expression, this, this person? It's, the person is not exactly smiling. It's not like a big smile or a big laughter, but you can see like the person is looking at me, right? And of course, this is a person dining outside in a mamak. A mamak is like an Indian Muslim restaurant in Malaysia where they serve like nasi lama, roti chanai. This guy is having his breakfast, so I just took a portrait of him. This shot was taken with the Canon G1X, by the way, for the person who asked the question earlier. And I also like to take photographs of the person. Uh, this, this is ongoing portraits of strangers, right? So it's all different kinds of portraits all together. I take different kinds of portraits. It's not just one singular type of portrait. So this is just a person having his drink outside in the five foot way, <laughs> right? Yeah, more portrait again, the, the friendly look of the person, right? I'm gonna go through. This one is a different kind of portrait. Uh, this is a different way of composition. So this is a mixture of composition, a creative composition, and uh, of course, something different, right? Something unique, something you don't see every day. But it's still a portrait of the person. The person still gave me that friendly look. He didn't say no. I'll just wave at him and he waved back and I walk away. Because obviously I shot this from a distance. Again, a consistent, friendly look from the person that I, I look. And this is an example of a lighting. Why lighting is very important for portraits. I'm going to skim through this because they look very, very consistent. I just want you guys to pay attention to that consistent expression on the face. Is this, this is the what that I look for in every single photograph that I take. Right? The consistent expression. Right? This is a wider shot of the person selling um, fruits in a market. Right? Uh, this is a fisherman out in the open, in the open sea. All right, uh, this is a more post shot. This this person, I didn't ask him to post, but he posed for me. Now, I, I'm not a fan of this type of shots because it looks less natural. It looks a little bit fake. I'm just throwing this here to, to show you what I don't like. I'm not saying this is a bad photograph. It's still a photograph that, that is can be considered a good photograph. It's just that it's not my favorite photograph because it looks very post. Like the person is very self-aware. I don't know if you can understand what I'm trying to say here. Same with this person. But this person is, person is friendly. It's just, sometimes the photograph is this photograph. You don't have to think so much. You just grab the photograph, right? Yeah. And I like to take photographs of people uh, out in the open, especially when they look at me. Actually, they asked me to take this photograph. I did not ask them. They asked me to take the photograph. 
and I went closer to this guy because of his um, interesting hair. <laughs> there you go. Oops, uh, the frame froze. All right, let me just quickly fix this. All right, let me just quickly fix, fix this. Let me see. Fix. All right, we are back. <laughs> I hope you guys saw that, uh, what, the point that I'm trying to make, uh, finding the story in your photograph, asking yourself what you are shooting, whether it's an idea, whether it's a story, whether it's something you want to tell, express, or an emotion they want to convey through your photograph. That subject content can take your photograph to the next level and it's something that your camera cannot do. Dark Chart Studio says, timing, lighting, uh, moment, moment, lighting, and composition. Composition, right? Torjus says, what is your key camera settings to be ready for the key moment? I don't have a fixed setting. So as I walk around, whatever happens, I just have to react reflexively, right? So when I'm outside shooting, either I'm shooting with, uh, usually it's on the aperture priority and it's under bright sunlight anyway, so I don't have to worry about shutter speed. Dark Trap Studio says, do you prefer the EMR Mark II versus G9? If possible, can you explain why? EMR Mark II because the EMR Mark II has the face detection autofocus, which the G9 lacks. And for me, uh, I am a one-man crew. So I set up the camera on a tripod. I don't want to think. I record, hit the record button as I talk to the camera, right? I want the camera to stick to my face. Like now, it doesn't miss my face. But if I use the G9, sometimes the autofocus will drift to the back. The DFD technology is not good enough. I wish Panasonic has included the face detection autofocus in their cameras earlier. They have it now in the G9 Mark II, but I think it's a little bit too late. But hey, better late than never, right? So if you have the budget, go for the G9 Mark II, of course. Axe Mila says, if not underwater, then about drone above. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of drone uh, footage. If you go to my vlog channel, yep. Escomis says, I'm loving this uh, coffee and photography talks. So no worries. So I will drink more coffee to that. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much. Gigi Wallace says, when a client needs a JPEG image uh, as soon as possible, do you save a raw file? Of course, always. So that's the important thing about having dual cut slots in your camera. I save raw in one cut and JPEG in another cut. So I can just take out the JPEG card and then give it to the client and put in another card to continue recording the JPEG, right? So the other card continues recording everything. So dual cut slots, very important for me. Like if the camera doesn't have dual cut slots, I will not use the camera for a job. Zotan says, if you worry too much about the how, you will miss out on the what. You're right about that, yes. Always try not to lose your vision on what you are doing in the first place, right? George says, Robin, I appreciate the photography focus chat. I understand the need for clicks. For what it's worth, I click on videos based on seeing your name. I'm sure there are many others who do the same. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the show of support, George. But the truth is, if I talk about composition, if I talk about uh, decisive moment, if I talk about storytelling, I've done this many times before. The views just immediately plunge and it's just so pathetic. And not only it affects that one particular video, but it also affects the future video and overall performance of the channel. It tells YouTube that people are not interested in watching my video and YouTube will not promote my future videos as much as they would if I get a lot of clicks in the first place, if you get what I mean. So it's like, well, it's not so much of like, I want to make videos to have a lot of clicks all the time, but then if no one is watching, then what, what is the point of me talking here, right? So I need to find a balance of making a video for the clicks and making the videos that I want to make. So it's, it's the balance that I, I need to, to, to strike. Eric says, you had a video with Lawa 6mm. I know you don't like manual lens, but is it good for a massive foyer? I'm trying to capture Union Station and 20mm doesn't stretch enough. I need equivalent of 0 0.6 on phone. I think 714 will be good enough. Uh, I would usually work with seven uh, autofocus lenses, if you know me well enough. But uh, if you need the lens to be as wide as possible, the widest lens, non-fish eye, rectilinear, is the six millimeters lower. Mm. That stretch today, it's not plain. It's plain, it's just a man and a bokeh, right? It's, there's nothing more than to that. And sometimes we, we don't, don't, don't think too much. It's just a simple person. But again, like, 
the question I'm asking is what made that shot work? It's the question what? It's the expression on the face. I don't know if I managed to get that message across, right? <laughs> Yumi says, thank you for sharing your photos and your photo experiences. No worries, it's my pleasure. And I do want to talk more about photography because I think it's pointless to, to, to have a photography channel if I don't have photographs to show. Zotan says, nice blurry background in your portrait photographs. Thank you so much. And that's very important, right? Dark Trap Studio says, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Rob is talking to Eric, uh, take three to four shots and stitch together to make a panel. Yeah. Nice Robin still, no worries. Dark Church Studio says, I didn't know you had a vlog channel. You should add it to your channel homepage. I intentionally make it harder for pe people to find so that people who found it, they really wanted to find it. You get what I mean? So yeah, it's, uh, it's a mystery, but I did share it earlier. If you scroll back the comments, it's, it's there somewhere. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll reshare the, the link. Let me just quickly grab the, the vlog channel link. All right. All right, Dark Trap Studio, here it is. Let me just highlight this comment. So it is this link. You go to this link here. Then you can find my vlog channel. Tojia says, uh, talking to Rob, another great micro photos vlogger. <laughs> yes, Rob is, hey, Rob, Rob Track, if you're still here, your portraits are amazing. Hey, the black and white, those dramatic portraits. Man, I wish you were here so you can take some portraits for me. I can update my profile for the rest. I don't mind paying you, like, seriously. Xmina says, do you store rows forever or do you delete them after you develop images delivered to clients? Always store your raw photographs because JPEG is an outdated format. We don't know how long the JPEG format is going to last. Uh, there are new formats now. Just we don't know whether these new formats will replace JPEG. I don't think it will happen anytime soon. But I can't guarantee 10 years, 20 years from now. But raw file will still be raw file and future softwares will be able to convert the raw file into whatever new formats, whether it's HEAF, high efficiency image formats or any other new formats in the future, right? So always keep the raw file. JPEG will not last forever. Penny says, thanks for sharing your great portrait photographs, but no women. They don't let you take photos of them casually, maybe a cultural thing. I do have women photographs, although the ratio is more like, I think, four to one. Four to one. It's just this, this particular series, I want them to be more consistent. And women photographs, they don't look the same. They don't look at me the same way. <laughs> they, they tend to usually smile a lot wider. Like the beaming, uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful smile, don't get me wrong. It's just that the men, they usually give me that very, I don't know, this, uh, it's very hard for me to, 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 to express. I talked about that earlier, right? Thank you so much, Dark Church Studio. I appreciate that. Uh, Jeff says, Hi Robin, thanks for all you do. Street portraits are something I enjoy, but just haven't figured out how to approach people well to ask permission. How do you approach people to take their portraits? I've done so many POV videos. Uh, just look at my main channel and every one of the POV videos actually show what happens before I take the photographs. It actually shows how I approach my, my subjects as well. And in Kuala Lumpur, I understand that different parts of the world, people react differently to street photographers. But here, people are so friendly. All you have to do is just walk up to them and say hi. And of course, you have to smile and just take photographs of them. Usually, they'll say yes. Not all the time. Sometimes people, maybe they, they woke up at the wrong side of the bed or maybe they had argument with their wife or maybe they, they just had a very bad day. And you have to be able to read people as well. That's part of the skill as a photographer. If you see that a person is grumpy, he's not in the right state of mind, don't approach them. If the person is already smiling to you, that's a green flag, right? Just approach, hey, hi. Can I take a photo of you? You just say yes. You take a photograph and you just show them the photograph and you just have a nice chat. Yeah. Yeah. Outdated. How about JPEG 2000? I'm not saying it's outdated. I'm just saying that it has been out for a long time and it will not be the same format forever. And there are like Apple is trying to push a new format already and we all know how powerful Apple is, right? When they dictated that we don't need the earphone jack anymore, Look at what happened. All the new smartphones don't have earphone jack anymore. Or when they dictated that we don't need chargers with smartphones anymore. Look at what all the new smartphone manufacturers are doing, like Samsung. No more chargers. <laughs> and they are pushing uh, HIF or high efficiency image format. Uh, 
The Wizard says, the reasons I watch your videos are you always share great photographs, you explain things well, and your consistent quality of content. Thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate it. And I really appreciate that you are here. And uh, the kind words mean a lot. And I will try my best to share as much as I can. But the consistent thing is that if I don't have photographs, then I have nothing to share. Like, that's the truth, right? I, I, I don't understand how some photographers can review a camera by just taking photographs of very boring things you get what i mean like you should try your best to take some beautiful photographs try your best to take meaningful photographs then you do a review based on the experience shooting with the camera right yeah penny says i love your answer thank you no worries i appreciate that i, tr I try my best Tojia says do you get any interest from local print media for your street photography uh not so much but i do work with the newspaper uh, locally, they do ask for not my street photographs, more for my other event photographs, location photographs, food photographs. <laughs> You'll be surprised with the things that they ask me for. Not so much on my street street photograph. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's high efficiency, high efficiency image format. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know more about... Yes, it's HEIF. And even Canon is pushing it. It's not just Apple, right? Yeah, I don't have any videos because I don't use that format yet. I still shoot with RAW and then convert to JPEG. So I don't know much about it. I haven't worked with it enough. Yeah. Esmida asks, if you take picture of some stranger on the market, do you want to send it? It means send it to them. Uh, some of them request. So I will take their emails or the social media and I'll post it to them after I've done... Uh, post-processing the, the images yep definitely all right time check it is midnight uh it's five minutes past midnight here in malaysia i'm gonna drink some water just keep myself hydrated we still have one more point to go <laughs> hmm. all right just check make sure i don't miss anything Checking everything. Everything is working well. Right, chat is fine. And the screen only froze once. Uh, the reason why it froze is because I'm using a new capture card. And you guys may not realize this, but uh, I'm streaming in 4K. Do you guys realize that? You're watching this stream in 4K and not many people are streaming in 4K. And it only froze once. And it was a quick fix, so not an issue. And so far, so good. You guys hearing me fine? Everything look okay, right? It was uh, clear on your end. Okay. All right, just drink a bit more. Okay. We have one more point to go. Okay, so five things that your camera cannot do. We have covered four points. Your camera cannot decide the composition for you. Your camera cannot know about lighting or control the lighting setup for your subjects. Your camera also cannot uh, decide the right moment or the timing, the perfect timing for your photograph because sometimes timing is everything. And Ari Katia Brisson says decisive moment, right? He's the, the, the creator of the concept decisive moment. And of course, storytelling, asking yourself, what are you telling through your photographs. That's very important. Your camera cannot answer that question for you. You as a photographer, you have to decide that. Now, the last point that I want to, I want to share is a very important point that a lot of people don't realize. Your photography is an extension of yourself. When you do photography, you are putting a part of your soul and a part of yourself into your photographs. You're putting your identity into your photographs. That's why I always discourage people from trying to copy other photographers. That's why I don't do photo critiques. A lot of people say, hey, Robin, like, it'll be fun if people send you photographs and then you comment on their photographs on how to improve. I try not to do that because if I tell you what's wrong with your photograph, if I tell you how to improve, I'm only telling you what I think. I'm only telling you how I view my photography. I'm only telling you how to be me. And that's not the right way to go because you are a different person and we are all different. We should all celebrate this diversity, right? And you have the right to be yourself. We all see things differently. We all love different things. And only being able to put yourself into your photography that you can truly see that your photography will rise to the next level. 
that's how you can create a voice and a unique style through your photography. I can't tell you how to do that. The only way for you to discover yourself through your photography is to learn more about yourself, is to be a better person, is to do a lot of work, keep shooting and shooting and shooting. And the more you shoot, the more you not just learn about the camera, but you also learn about yourself, what you like and what you don't like. And it's okay not to like everything. If you tell me, Robin, Robin, I don't like to take portraits of strangers. Robin, I don't like people photography. I don't like to take photos of people. That's okay. That's perfectly fine, you know? And if you, you know, tell me, I, I just like to take things that don't involve people. I like landscape, I like animals. So it's okay, you have your voice. We all love different people. Oh, sorry, different subjects. And only by discovering what you truly like, only by discovering what you love, only by discovering yourself, that you can truly do your photography your own way. And no one can take it from you. I don't like to tell people, oh, you know, like, yeah, this photography, photographer A is better than photographer B. I don't want to tell people, wow, photographer C is the best photographer. All the other photographers are not as good as him. I don't want to say, oh, this is a number one photographer, number two photographer. There's no such thing. We are all different. We are all doing things our own way. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You have to decide what you love. Oops. The light box fell. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that will have to, sorry, I shouldn't have touched the microphone. That will have to stay, stay down for a while. The, the wind blew in through the window. I don't know if you guys saw that. The OM1 Mark II fell. Oh, that is not a good sign for what's to come next week. Hey. <laughs> anyway, back to the point. Be yourself. Don't worry so much about trying to be someone else. Don't worry so much about if you're not as good as some other photographers or if you can be a better than any other. Don't compare. Don't compare. Just focus on yourself. Work on yourself. Be yourself. It is your journey. Everyone is different. And if you stay true to yourself, then your photography is truly yours. No one can take that away from you. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Hey, all right, let's come back to the comments. All right. Dark Chat Studio says, midnight and drinking coffee. Yeah, coffee. There's uh, like a, a drop left. Yeah. No more coffee. Coffee is finished. Dark Chat Studio says, yeah, look like 2K. I think it says 2160, right? If the option says 2160, that's 4K because 4K resolution is 3840 on the width times 2160 on, sorry, the length is 3840 and then the width is 2160. Yeah, Zotan says it's 4K. Yumi says, yeah, sound check and video check, all fine, thank you. Yeah, Gigi Vala says, I have 4K 55 inch and it looks fabulous in 4K. Thank you. Wow, I can't imagine seeing myself in 55 inch. That's scary. Uh, Zotan says, great audio and video. Already. No worries. Rob says, uh, thanks. I'm dropping in and out while making a new video with some cell portraits. Ah, can't wait to see that. Hey, yeah. Gordon says, hi, Robin. All looks good streaming in 4K. Well done. No worries. Trying something different. New year's, new resolution. Hey. Crystal says, one of the hardest things is navigating the social aspects of a photo. Even if the photo itself is not a portrait. Yeah, that's true. Hey, and we don't have to figure things out immediately. We don't have the, all the answers right away. It's a journey, right? It's a process. And we have to enjoy the process every single step of the way. And we and great things cannot be rushed. We have to take our time and really go through every single step. So... No worries. Johan Johans? Is that how I pronounce Johans? <laughs> Thank you so much for the heart. Crystal says, if only my EM1 Mark II had voice assistant to explain to people what I am doing. <laughs> Maybe one day they will. Hey, at the point of how AI is developing, at, at the pace of how AI is developing. K says, oh, you're so right. Photography is also personality. Yes, your photography should have your personality. Yeah, Johan says, the last point, you nailed it. Thank you so much. Crystal says, I had a photographer down on me for using a circular polarizer. I honestly will never understand why photographers want to force their way of doing no. Yeah, don't, don't listen to other people. You do you. If you feel that the uh, polarizer helps you to achieve certain things, which it, 
it does. Like I use polarizer for a few reasons. Like if I shoot through a reflection or if I have things that has glass, the polarizer obviously helps cut, cut the reflection, right? And I need that for my professional jobs. <laughs> like, who are you to tell me not to use polarizer? Corey, hey, how are you? Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> nice to see you here, Corey. The Dark Church Studio says, it is in 4K. I mean, the stream looks like a 2K image. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Zoltan says, you're so right, Robin. Every human different, therefore, every photographer and techniques are different. Some people prefer very shallow the field and some people don't. Yeah, we all have our own preferences, right? Hmm. Do we need a 4K device to benefit from a 4K broadcast? Not necessarily. Yeah, any, any viewing device is fine. You can view it from any screen. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Happy New Year. No worries. Happy New Year to you too. Yeah, how about the rest of you guys? Do you, do you feel that this 4K is not exactly a 4K quality? Because, okay, I don't have a 4K screen. I have a 2K screen, right? But this should be streaming in full 4K because I put the canvas and all the settings are in full 4K. Just let me know. Yeah, I, of course, would love to improve things a little bit better. If you are watching on a 4K screen, yeah, let me know. And someone did watch in a 4K screen earlier and tell me that it looks uh, great. Yeah. Pinnacle Pete says, Robin, if you ever visit New York, be prepared that people on the street are not particularly friendly, won't look at you and are in a big hurry. Still, there is much to see and do. Yeah, I heard about that as well. Yeah, no worries. Tojo says, do you ever experience flow when you shoot on the street? Flow? What do you mean flow when you shoot on the street? I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, Daniel Victor says, Robin, thank you so much. Your laughing and smile is often saving the day. Stay positive. No worries. All right, I've caught up with all the comments and it is already past midnight and it has been an extremely long day for me. I went out uh, in the morning, went to the gym and then after that, I had lunch. My, my friend Jackie, he borrowed some lenses from me. He has a shoot tomorrow. And then uh, after the lunch, I went to the photo festival. I caught up with a few friends at three o'clock. My friend Azul gave a talk, so I was there to support him. I was vlogging the whole time. And then Arif was there, Van was there, Rippy and all my friends were there. And then uh, I came home around dinner time, had dinner, just had a quick rest and I had to do prepare for this stream already, right? So it has been a continuous long day and I'll be speaking on this uh, live stream for more than two hours. So I am exhausted. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for, for being here. I was just gonna, I see some more comments streaming in. Uh, let's just see, we have, wow, we still have more than 100 people tuning in. That's a lot of you. We have a, still a, a few more comments. I'll, I'll go through them. And after these streams of comment, I will end the stream. Tojo says, image looks fine. Thank you. Yeah. Johans says, it is perfect for K. Is that how I pronounce your name, Johans? I hope, sorry, so sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Dr. Studio says, I think the streaming codec is not as good as regular videos, but it's really good. Thank you so much. It is already at the highest recommended quality from YouTube. And yes, of course, YouTube also um, compresses the video, right? Yeah. Uh, creative flow, resistive flow, Toji. Oh, you mean like if I show on the street, do I experience creative block or something like that? Uh, not really so far. Like if I don't feel like shooting, I don't shoot. Don't force yourself, right? Uh, there are days where you just feel like watching a movie or, you know, you don't feel like doing anything at all. You just want to read a book or, or doing something. Like one of the things that I do is I will listen to music for hours just to unwind. That's something that I do or read a book or I hang out with friends. I don't shoot all the time. I will get burned out. Hey, <laughs> Bear in mind that I am a photographer by profession. Like I shoot for clients, right? Sometimes I shoot from Mondays to Fridays for clients and Saturday and Sunday, I just don't want to touch the camera anymore. And that is okay. You know, it's okay to take a break, right? Yeah. Right. Good night, Goip. No worries. Thanks for being here. Van says, catch your live next week. No worries. Thanks for being here, Van. Appreciate you. Yeah, the wizard says, thank you, Robin. You're excellent. No worries. Toja says, good night. Good night to you too. Good night, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Kara. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you. 
One of the best streams so far, very positive, inspiring, and motivating, no worries. And Jeff says, hey, Jeff, you're still here. Fabulous streamer being, looking forward to Sunday. Yes, guys, Sunday, I'm going live with Rob Track. Don't uh, make sure you tune in. Jeff says, thank you, Robin. This is my first time watching. Fantastic content, engagement, and of course, beautiful photos. Thank you so much. Peter says, Robin, uh, take static photos. No running cats out of fast moving creatures. I should in aperture mode. Occasionally adjust the composite. Does it make sense to switch? to No. If you find that whatever you're doing now works, if your aperture priority works, stay with it. I shoot with aperture priority, even with fast moving subjects. No point to make things complicated. If you go to manual, you just have more variables or more things to think about. It will overcomplicate things. So I would like to keep things as simple as possible and focus on the moment, the lighting, the composition, the storytelling, and being yourself, right? That's, these are the things that your camera cannot do for you and you have to put in an effort to make sure that photograph happen. Yeah, flow is an altered state of consciousness where things seem to happen on its own, seemingly without you doing anything. No, I don't, I don't think things happen on their own. <laughs> I have to consciously think. I have to use my brain. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't happen. Yep. All right. Uh, I will end here. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening to me, listening to my rants, and I hope you guys have benefited from this sharing. Just a quick cap. Uh, let's not obsess about gear too much. Whatever camera and lens you have is already good enough. Even if it's 10 years, 20 years old camera, I've proven again and again that older cameras are still great cameras. Please go out and shoot more, right? There are many things that can make your photographs great. That includes composition, uh, making sure you have great lighting, make sure you have good timing and decisive moment, decide on the right timing for a great shot. Uh, make sure that you have something that you want to say in your photograph. Ask yourself, what are you doing in that photograph? The story, the emotion that you're telling. And more importantly, just be yourself. These are the things that your camera cannot do to you, do for you, sorry. Your camera cannot do for you and you have to decide for your camera and decide for your photographs. And I'm sure that this will take your photography to the next level. If you have enjoyed looking at any of my photographs that I've shared in this stream, if you've enjoyed, uh, if you have benefited from my sharing, please consider buying me a cup of coffee, link up here. Uh, noise up uh, here that's the link and of course you can find the links in the description below you can buy me coffee or you can contribute to my to my paypal any small contribution is definitely appreciated it will definitely help me to continue making more videos i have so many more videos to share i have some exciting ones to share next week and if the rumor is true if om system om1 mark 2 is released next week we will talk about that in next week's stream <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much, guys, and good night. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.